The Hallmark Corporation, Blue Cross and Blue Shield, The Ski Shop, Home of Economy, Fat Alberts, The Golden Q, GR Graphics, Community National Bank, The Riverbend Supper Club, Grand Forks Convention and Visitors Bureau, Wilcox Auction Mall, Morris, and Shakey's Pizza. Can anyone beat the University of North Dakota hockey team? Duluth hasn't been able to, Denver wasn't able to, Northern Michigan wasn't able to, and so far Wisconsin hasn't been able to either. But the Badgers get another crack tonight as the Sioux go for an 8-0 record. Good evening to you. This is Pat Sweeney along with former Sioux defenseman Travis Dunn at the UND Winter Sports Center. Game two of this series between the Badgers and the Sioux. Last night, the Sioux took game one, nine to four, and Travis, I think a key tonight is both teams definitely want to stay out of that penalty box. Well, if the referee will let them play their game, it could be a very interesting one. Uh, I'm sure Wisconsin's going to come out fired up tonight. They've got nothing to lose. They've got to get two points this weekend. They've got to work hard to get those two points in their minds. Uh, it's going to be an interesting game. As for UND, the Sioux need a win to stay alone in first place because the Gophers beat Denver today three to one. Well, this Wisconsin team did beat that Minnesota team, and that's why they're sitting at 7-1 and one right now. So Wisconsin can beat the high-power teams in this league. So, again, it's going to be interesting to see if they come up to a challenge this evening. UND going with that bell four in goal. Wisconsin making a change, sticking with Dean Anderson. Well, he played the third period. He got a little bit of action last night, or a lot of action, as we saw in the third period. Ed Belfour has been playing very well. He's a three goals against average right now, so I'm sure he can come up to the challenge. The starting lineups tonight, other than that, a defense for North Dakota, Darren Fosland and Ian Kidd. The forward line will be that Herkus Circus with Tony Herkus centering Steve Johnson and Bob Joyce. For Wisconsin, Anderson in goal, Paul Stanton and Rob Mandel at defense. The forward line, Tony Granato, Gary Shuchik, and Paul Ranheim. Back with the game after this. Shooting for a great evening of relaxation, good food, and fun? Then head for the East Grand Forks Golden Q Billiard Lounge. The Golden Q knows what you're looking for. Billiard tables, pinball, video games, frosty pitchers of beer, and a complete selection of delicious homemade food, including the Golden Q's famous billiard burger. It all racks up to a good time. So plan to join your friends downtown East Grand Forks at the Golden Q Billiard Lounge. Protecting, caring is doing all that you can do. So when you care about the ones you love, come to us. Caring is Blue Cross Blue Shield. Caring the caring card. Welcome back to the Winter Sports Center in Grand Forks, North Dakota. Pat Sweeney and Travis Dunn ready to bring you the action of Game 2 in this Wisconsin-North Dakota series. There you get a look at the starting lineup for Wisconsin. As we mentioned, Dean Anderson came in to relieve Mike Richter in last night's game. Richter pulled after two periods as he was a year ago in this building. So Richter can't seem to quite uh, find the range in the Winter Sports Center anyway. And North Dakota going with Ed Belfour in goal as they have every Saturday throughout this season. Darren Fawzen, the newcomer at left defense there, he played his first collegiate game one week ago tonight and scored a goal against Northern Michigan. And I don't think it's a case of Mike Richter not really getting his range in this rink. I just think it's a case of one fired up UND hockey team and his team kind of caught you know, with 11 youngsters in the lineup, 11 faces haven't been in this building before, a little intimidated. He played quite well in the first two periods, but just saw a lot of rubber. I shouldn't say that, but really, the, it was not all his fault. He wasn't getting a heck of a lot of help either. Well, when you're the last line of defense and everybody else is uh, collapsing in front of you, uh, you're usually the one who ends up getting blamed, you're the one who made, is made to look bad by all the opportunities that your team gets. In this case, uh, UND, especially the Hercus Circus line, had opportunities after opportunity, and there's just no way you can deny them, uh, you know, scoring up, scoring from scoring points uh, when they, you know, when they get so many good opportunities. And Coach John Gino Gasparini, obviously happy with that 7-0 record and number one ranking in the nation, but complacency, as John Marks told me earlier this week, is not a word in this team's vocabulary. Well, Gino's never been one to be satisfied. Well, not out. No, he wouldn't show anybody he's satisfied anyway. He wouldn't tell anybody. Inside, he might be. Outside, he, he doesn't show it. So 
he doesn't let his team get too complacent. He keeps them on their toes, and they know that if they don't come out and play well, even if they win, the coaches won't be pleased with them, and they'll, they'll, they'll pay for it on Monday during practice. So uh, they'll, work, they'll come out and work hard, I'm sure. Last night, Minnesota beat Denver, and the Gophers completed the sweep today, 3-1, to one, but Gopher forward Corey Millen injured in that game. An ankle injury, and we don't know exactly how long he will be out, but that is a big loss as you take a look at the rest of last night's score. Away we go here with period number one, the Sioux and the Badgers. North Dakota dressed in white and moving from left to right on your screen. Tony Herkus tried to spring the pass ahead, but it was blocked by Rob Mandel, and Herkus has to go back. Throws it out to center. Paul Stanton going back for it. Mandel also going back. Dean Anderson leaves it for Mandel. Bob Joyce, number 20, takes a shove at him. He's going for the frozen puck, and he gets it with 19.34 to go. And this Wisconsin team is, uh, like, like we talked earlier, did beat the University of Minnesota, and they were, were undefeated until last week. So this is a very good, very capable hockey team. Last night they were caught a little off guard, and I'm sure with that sound crashing they took last night, they'll come out twice as far up tonight, and hopefully their game plan will be, in, in their eyes, to come out and jump on UND as fast as possible. I don't care what anybody says, Wisconsin still scares me. In front, Herkus can't get the stick down. Joyce a shot and a big save by Anderson. Johnson trying to get the rebound. It goes off to the side. Now Herkus and Stanton battling for control. Herkus gets it. Herkus with a man wrapping him up. Comes over to the near side. Herkus shoots. Kick out by Anderson. Who? Oh, here's Herkus again with the puck. In front, goes through everybody. And Stanton shoves the puck over to the sideboard. And there's no whistle there. Sue get it back. Darren Fawson to head for Johnson. And it's off his stick. And Stanton fires it into the Sioux end. Darren Fawson of Bemidji. Ahead to Tony Herkus. Now Steve Johnson with it. Has Joyce. Here's Joyce with the puck. Hope checked off his stick on a good play by Gary Buns. And it comes back to Mike Lemoyne as the Sioux makes some changes. As does Wisconsin. Russ Parent ahead, intercepted by Ken McKenzie. He flips it in. Belfour with the stop. The rebound cleared, but not out. Pat Ford lets it go. Here's McKenzie. Fans on it. Comes right to North Dakota's Scott Dube. Now ahead to Kovaritsky. Back to Dube. Dube trying to get around Buns, and he goes down on a check. Now number 16, Glenn Revac in the corner. Revac scored two of Wisconsin's goals last night. Puck squirts loose. Here's Kovaritsky. Out at the point. Lemoyne a shot, and that's why. Russ Parrott in after the rebound. Taken away by Kobarinski. Can't get the pass off as it's blocked. McKenzie throws it back to the net for Gary Bunn. Bunn's flipping it to the neutralized area where Russ Parrott has it for UND. This is due. He runs into a check from Gary Bunn. And Todd Geismas takes over. Intercepted by Parrott. Here's Parrott with Kupinich. A shot and that's high. And into the crowd. Oh, an excellent defensive play by young Ross Perrin as he stepped into the fly, he intercepted a Wisconsin shot, and Wisconsin passed to the center of the rink, and this fired the puck, unfortunately went off one of the Wisconsin players over the glass, but a, a good heads-up play by Ross Perrin. Those are the updated standings now, as Minnesota temporarily moves into a first-place high with the Sioux. And Denver has been slipping a little bit. Wisconsin with last night's loss, moving to fourth place, a tie with Northern Michigan. 17 minutes, 37 seconds to go in the first period. We have no score. Mickey Krupinich with the puck. He shoots through a screen and hits traffic and goes off to the side. John Bice, number 11 for Wisconsin. Geisness takes over, number 23, Todd Geisness. And he loses control to Tarek Howard. Geisness and Howard muscling in there. Buck comes loose. Vice sends it forward. Belfer knocks it away. Still a loose buck. It's underneath the Sioux player, Howard, and there's the whistle. And that is exactly what the University of Wisconsin team has been trying to do. I'm sure the last night and for the start of this game, only UND has been jumping all over them. Uh, they've got a little good forechecking, trying to hem them up in their own end of the rink, the Sioux, that is. And, uh, and that play worked out for them, worked out for them. Now the Tom Sagasaur line is out for. Wisconsin and Mickey Krumpetich's line out for UND 
Tony Scheid can't get the puck as Perry Nakaneshny was tying him up, and it comes back to Sean Sable. To Geisness, it's off his stick. He's being chased back. Krupinich <laughs> slips and falls. Now Krupinich gets the puck again. Here's Krupinich moving in. A shot stopped by Anderson. And Sagasaur barrels into Krupinich after the play. Krupinich picks up the loose puck. No, now he gets it back around back of the net. And Wisconsin takes over, intercepted by Benson at the line. Knocked down by the Badgers, Tom Sagasaur of Hastings, Minnesota. To Todd Geisner. Geisner, the Wisconsin native, leaves it for Sagasaur. Bodies going down here, and back come the Sioux. They've got a four on two. Here's Perry Nakaneshny. Centering pass, and it's blocked by Tony Scheid. The Badgers clear. This will be icing. And we'll take a break. It's harvest time at Valley Honda with 1986 Honda ATV carryover models specially priced while they last. Choose from three and four wheelers like Big Red, Honda Four Tracks, and more. All built for a good time, anytime. As with any motorized vehicle, safety plays a big part in the total enjoyment. Honda ATVs have many built-in safety features. Visit Valley Honda today and ask about the fall lineup of Honda ATVs and save while the harvest specials are hot. 16 minutes and 7 seconds remaining in the first period. Nothing, nothing is the score. As the faceoff is down in the Wisconsin end between Steve Johnson and Tony Granato. Thrown around and stopped by Darren Fawson. Here's Fawson to shot. Stick save by Dean Anderson. Steve Johnson in there causing problems with his checking and the Badgers try to clear it now as Ranheim sends it ahead to Granado. He flips it into the UND zone. Darren Fawson and Gary Shuchek go barreling in after it. Shuchek gets a stick down on it. Now Granado centers it and it's stolen away by Herkus. Herkus into Wisconsin. IT falls down. No penalty there. Joyce banging in there with Granado. And referee Derek Martin blows the whistle. The linesman tonight, Buzz Olson of East Grand Forks, Keith Markstrom of Warroad, Minnesota. Both Paul Ranheim and Tony Granato were very quiet last night, but for obvious reasons, when you have Tony Herkus and Bob Joyce out there, they were the ones carrying 99% of the offense last night. And uh, this thing, those guys are playing defense more than worrying about carrying the puck and trying to score goals. For UND, Lee Davidson is out there now. He talked to that young man in the second intermission last night. Lee Davidson, number 14, centering Brent Bobbick and Scott Bricky. Bricky playing in his second collegiate game ever tonight. Grant Peronica is out with a hip injury for UND. Not dressing tonight, Murray Barron, a defenseman, and forward Bill Claviter. Both those players did suit up last night. And I'm sure with Gino switching his defense around a little bit, he's just trying to get them all a little bit of ice time in case you know someone doesn't know the injury. Uh, that way he doesn't have to worry about putting a raw rookie into the lineup. 15-25 remaining in the first period as you see Derek Martin of Chicago, tonight's referee. Straightening the situation out. Puck rolls right to Anderson and he clears it. Stopped at the sideboards. Chris Tansel trying to take a whack at it. Can't get it out. And it's gloved by Anderson. And you mentioned the referee being from Chicago. UND also has a young man who's from Chicago, and a name we're all very familiar with, Peter Pappen, the son of Jim Pappen, who was an right. ex-Chicago Blackhawk. And UND is going to make a line change here. They had Koborinsky's line out. Now they're sending Davidson's line out again. <laughs> and Derek Martin, the referee, says enough is enough. Wisconsin tried to pull it now. And he is sending the Badger players back to the bench. Well, that's the advantage of home ice. You're allowed the last change in that play, and Wisconsin tried to get the last change, and the referee would not allow it, which is the, the rule in the rule book. The home team does get the last change, and a little bit of shuffling tonight on both coaches' parts. And Jeff Sauer says to heck with it. Here's Paul Gravelin, number 10, shooting it in for Wisconsin. Gravelin picking it up again and sending it back in the net. Gravelin, of course, 
the Grand Forks Central product. Here's Mike Lemoyne of Red River sending it around, and Bobbitt crashes into the boards with his man, Kurt Samandel. Meantime, the puck comes back to the Badger end of the ice, and Scott Ricky and a Badger player were roughing it up, and the fans calling for a penalty on Wisconsin. Davidson throws his weight into Gravelin. Now, Ricky banging in there, but it's stolen away by Chris Cancel. On the far side, Kurt Samandel backhands it up, but it comes to UND's Russ Perrin. No score, 14-21 to go, first period. Bobak centers it. Here's Bricky on the backhand. Easy stick save for Anderson. Held in at the line by Parent, but the Badgers come out with it. Kurt Samandel, the pass is behind him, and Duke knocks it away. Oh, Koborinski tried to save it, couldn't quite do it, but a good try. Now Koborinski intercepts. Here comes UND, three abreast. Koborinski to Parks. He shoots, and the save by Anderson. Well, it's pretty much a replay of last evening with the forechecking just killing Wisconsin. All the opportunities they're giving up on the uh, exchange of the puck. And here we see Scott Koberinski just coming in. And you see Mel Parse come on the left, on the right part of your screen, breaking towards net. But unfortunately, he's kind of in so close, he really can't get much of a shot on that with the Wisconsin defense coming back. But Dean Anderson coming out, standing his ground, making an excellent, an excellent save. So the score remains nothing to nothing. Parks with the puck again. Mal Parks tried to backhand it in front. Now Koborinski picking it up to do, but backhander hits the side of the net. Wisconsin tries to clear to no avail. Do out to the point. Benson waits for it. Now it's blocked and comes outside the line to Tarek Howard. Benson fires it ahead to Parks. Now back to the Wisconsin blue line, and it's still between the blue lines here. Nobody getting quite clear control, but. Benson shoots it in for the Sioux. Parks going after it. Now Sable tried a clearing pass, bounces in front to Parks. He couldn't get the stick on it. Now Howard at center, wrapped up there by Pat Ford. Parks takes an elbow at Steve Tuttle, number nine. It's no place for the meek in front of that Wisconsin bench, and the puck is cleared. Loose puck picked up. And it's blown on a penalty call here. High sticking on UND. And again, before I make any comments, to make sure we see the replay or see who's going into the bench, as last night we had a few mix up our, mixed ups ourselves up here. And I believe it's well, the UND side as the Tar door is open. Tarek Howard, by the looks of it. Yeah, Tarek Howard going in, I believe, is behind the play. He turned around, his stick happened to be up. A little higher than it should be, and he caught one of the Wisconsin players high on one of his on his shoulder, I believe. It was one of those ones an unintentional type of penalty. It was, uh, it was just kind of in traffic, and the sticks were going places they probably shouldn't have been. So a high sticking call on Tarek Howard at 7:09, and with Wisconsin, two of their four goal output last night were on the power play. So it'd be interesting to see if UND, three of their four, pardon me, can it'd be interesting to see if UND can kill this penalty off as they had some trouble with that. Wisconsin power play last evening. And Glenn Revac scored two of those power play goals for Wisconsin, and he's out on the ice right now, number 16 out of Winnipeg. Well, the Badgers nearly got crossed up there. Herkus can't get his stick down on it. Now he's going for the freeze. No whistle yet. Stanton and Ford banging in there, trying to dig it loose. Now Ford comes out with it. And Herkus nearly robs him, and it's whistled offside. It is very amazing to see Tony Herkus come out and be able to skate with as much energy as he had this evening after playing about 40 minutes of the game last night. I'm not sure the exact amount of time, but uh, he played an awful lot of the game last night, and yet he's still able to come back after being pinned against the board, skate three quarters of the way down the ice, and force the Wisconsin player to go outside with the puck. So where he gets that energy, I don't know. Tony Herkus, definitely amazing. So Herkus facing the other number 21, Granado on the draw. It comes back to Sean Sable. Over to Chris Cancel, number 22, the freshman from Livonia, Michigan. Tosses it in, and Kidd goes back to get it. Joyce takes a whack at it. The Badgers hold it in, Ranheim. To Granado, back to Ranheim now. Here's Cancel to Ranheim. He shoots, and that hits somebody in front and bounced away. Sable sending it back in the corner to Granado. Kid on him. 
Sable again. Shot by Shuchuk and a stick stop by Belfour, and the two clear it. 55 seconds to go on the penalty to Tarek Howard. Herkut's back in the net. Look out. He pulled some tricks there earlier this year. Badgers come back. Sean Sable now leaves it. Here's Ranheim. A shot blocked by Ian Kidd. And cleared by Mike Lemoyne. We'll have a feature story on Mike Lemoyne in our first intermission. Loose puck. As the Badgers having difficulty. Oh, Sable almost put it in his own net. Now Krupinich steals and centers it, but it's intercepted by Tansel. Over for Granado now. Belfour will let it go for Perry Nakaneshny. Cleared but not out. Shuchik trying to hold it in. Bouncing puck cleared by Kidd. And that should kill the penalty. As Tara Howard is out of the box. Nothing, nothing. 10.45 to go, first period. Here's Pat Ford across the Sioux line. Tuttle can't get a stick on it. Here's Krumpenich for UND. Ahead to Bobak. Bobak losing control of it. And it's intercepted by Glenn Revac, number 16. Revac into the corner. Parent on top of him. Pat Ford in to take over. Intended for McKenzie, and he has to go back for it. the Badgers bring it across, but the Sioux bring it back out. Davidson over to Bobak. Knocked off his stick. Ricky taking control. He loses it, however, and the Badgers send it down. And Benson retrieves for the Sioux. Scott Ricky, the pass is blocked by Sagasaur, but he shoots it back in. Geisness number 23, a Wisconsin native. Picked off by Bobak. Here's Davidson now. Davidson shot his block. Bobak into the corner with a couple of badgers. Now Ricky in to join the fray, and some bodies go flying there. Non-stop play here. 9.21 remaining in the opening period. There is no score. And the Sioux send out some fresh troops. Tony Scheid, number 33, loses it to Parks. Darren Fawson, number two, carries on. And Fawson takes a shot from one of the Badgers and a penalty coming up here. 9.04 to go and we'll be right back. Pickups, pickups, pickups. Hanson Ford Lincoln Mercury has the selection you need of F-150 and Ranger pickups. Solid construction, yet interiors that make the new pickups from Ford a step above the competition. The selection has never been better and the price is never lower. Every new 86 pickup is closeout price. So hurry and save thousands now at Hanson Ford while the selection is best. Cause we've got the car for you. And we can't quite pick up the penalty call there, but as Darren Fossen stepped over the blue line, one of the Wisconsin players stepped in and had a, an elbow up a little bit high. Referee giant in the spot to put him in the penalty box for two minutes. Krumpenich with the shot, and it's deflected wide. Gary Buns was the penalized player two minutes for high sticking at 10.56. So the Sioux go on the power play for the first time tonight. Steve Johnson with it now. Back to Ian Kidd at the point. Joyce and Herkus in front. Joyce is sent flying by Paul Stanton. Centering pass, and it's through the crease. UND scored three power play goals last night. Johnson, Kidd, and Herkus got them. And they're all on the ice right now. But Stanton has control of the puck, and he sends it out to the center ice area. Bob Joyce leading the Sioux with four power play goals this year. Now Tony Herkus along the line to Krupinich. It's hard off his stick, and Stanton carries away. It's in the skates of Paul Ranheim, and he gets a weak pass off. Kid carrying in for the Sioux. Trying to get around his man. Loose puck picked up by Paul Stanton. Knocked down by Joyce, but it's outside the line, so they have to reorganize it. 52 seconds to go on the Wisconsin penalty. Anderson with an easy save, and he decides to hang on. And in games such as these, which are developing into close-checking, very closely played games, 
it's your specialty teams which are going to win or lose the games for you. In this case, the Indy has killed off a penalty, and right now Wisconsin's doing a very good job of killing off theirs, so it could be a power play goal by either team which could end up winning the game for them. As you look at Ed Belfour, the freshman from Carmen, Manitoba, and I have to brag about Carmen because that's where my dad was born, and uh, I have an uncle living out in Carmen, and uh, I'm sure a lot of people in that area are very interested to see Ed Belfour playing. And Ed tells me that uh, they do get WDAZ in Carmen, so we hope we've got some people watching up there tonight. And Wisconsin clears it out of there on a good defensive play by Todd Geisness to eat up more time. 32 seconds to go on the Wisconsin penalty to Gary Buns. Ian Kidd for North Dakota leading the rush. Dishes off to Koborinsky. Back to Parrott. Off the boards to Koborinsky now. Back to Parrott again. They play it over for Kidd to Koborinsky. To Parrott. He shoots, and that's why. Koborinsky gets the rebound. Five seconds to go on the penalty. Oh, it hops over Kidd's stick. And that will kill the penalty as Buns is out right now. Here's Koborinsky sending it in. The Sioux trying to change lines here. But it's Steve Tuttle for Wisconsin. Gets by Jeff Bowen. Trying to get around Lemoyne. Lemoyne taps it back. And the Sioux go the other way. But the Badgers send it out. Rush Parrott number 17. And that play is whistled offside. And we just speak about Paul Gravelin being from Grand Forks. It's, uh, unfortunately, I worked out this summer a little bit with Judd Sondriol. Another Grand Forks Red River, Red River product who went to the University of Wisconsin. And this year was one of his last hurrahs. He's going to give a good shot to see if he can make the team. And unfortunately, he did not make the trip to Grand Forks. And in talking to him, that was his one big dream that he had was to make the team and make the trip to Grand Forks. And unfortunately, that dream never came true. And uh, anybody who knows Judd Sondriol knows that he gave it his best shot. A real fine individual and a real nice, you know, someone I've known since he was the stick boy at UND when I played. Judd's a heck of a guy, and we wish he was here. 6.35, time remaining in the first period. There is no score. Action in the Wisconsin zone. Here's Krupinich centering pass, and it hits Bowen as he was turning around. Benson a shot, and it's blocked in front by John Bice. Here's Zakaneshny with the rebound. He can't quite get it. It was underneath him. Stolen away now by the Badgers. Here they come, three on two. Paul Ranheim. Forced wide by Benson. The centering pass. Shuchuk a shot. Comes out in front. Granato a shot in that time. Another shot stopped. Another one by Granato. Belfour not letting anything in yet. A couple of bad angle shots there. Gary Shuchuk. Out to the point, Bice over to Sable. It's off his stick. Sable sends it in front. Turnaround shot. Granado blocked in front by Howard. Golfed out of there by Nakaneshny. And the Sioux and the Badgers take this opportunity to send out some new players. Sable dumping it in. Belfour will have to stop it. And he covers up before damage is done. And the amazing thing about that rush was that was one of the first opportunities that Wisconsin's had a three-on-two all weekend long. Every time they've come down, it's been three-on-three, three-on-four at times. And that's the first time they came down three-on-two. And then look at the opportunities they got because of it. They've got Glenn Revac, Steve Tuttle, and Pat Ford out there now. Ford to face it off with freshman Lee Davidson. Comes back to Darren Fosnick. Playing his second game as a Sioux. Badgers take control, though. Loose puck in front. Fosnick had a swipe at it, but Belfour fell on it. And this is a very different University of Wisconsin team than we saw last evening. Last evening, they were down a couple of goals by this time and uh, were reeling, taking a few more chances. This time, they've tightened it up defensively, taking away the good slot opportunities that UN from U the UND had last night. And that's the reason the score is at 0-0. Zero, zero. And the other thing we notice, only two penalties in this period so far. The referees let them play the game. Tuttle whips it into the corner. Comes along the near side now. Loose puck taken away by Ian Kidd. Held in at the line by Buns, but it's right to Scott Ricky. Ricky ahead to Davidson. It's off his stick. Davidson and McKenzie in a fight for it. Ricky takes a shoulder from Pat Ford. Well, that was Bobak, I beg your pardon, number 25. Fawson can't keep it in, and here's Steve Tuttle. 
for the Badgers. Tuttle tried to get it to Reback, and a great play by Ian Kidd. As Wisconsin had a two-on-one. Stolen away again, but cleared by the Sioux, and now McKenzie has it for the Badgers. Nothing, nothing, four and a half minutes to go in the opening period. Perkis to center ice, too far for Steve Johnson. Stanton pokes it ahead. Sagasaur digging for it. Herkus comes out with it. Loose puck. Badgers finally get it. Tony Scheid brings it across. Johnson goes down. Big tie up here. And a faceoff coming up. And the big difference also is the fact that last night Tony Herkus was allowed to wheel and deal with the puck. And tonight he has not had that opportunity. They've taken away all the space that he had last night. And that's what happens when they tighten up the old defensive play. Wisconsin's having their wingers come back and just taking away most of the zones that UND wheeled and dealed in last night. And a penalty was called on the play, apparently right there to Ian okay. Kidd for cross-checking. Okay, we saw that didn't really see it from this angle, but he came in having a stick up, either elbowing or high sticking. A sophomore from Gresham, Oregon, who is a, a, an assistant captain on the team, alternate captain. And someone who the Detroit Red Wings made one big mistake on this year, didn't they? Wasting a draft choice in their supplemental draft. Player has to be, what, it's under 18 years of age, 19 years of age, whatever it is, to be drafted in a supplemental draft. And the Detroit Red Wings drafted him, and he was too old, and they didn't know it, so they wasted their draft choice. The official call is elbowing at 15.53. So Wisconsin with its second power play chance of the night. Granado, Ranheim, and Shuchik up front. Kirkus and Joyce up front to kill it for UND. Here's Granado walking in, but it's poked off his stick. Tarek Howard intercepts. Tries to clear it. Bouncing puck, and Joyce swats it down. Number 22, Chris Cancel back to get it. Oh, Joyce in a collision there with Dean Anderson. Anderson lost his stick. Has to go back. Meantime, Granado a shot. Hit the post. Wisconsin's best chance of the night, but here's Herkus with Joyce breaking in. He's turned around. Oh, he still got the shot off, and it hit the side of the net. Back come the Badgers. Here's Ranheim. Can't get around the defenseman Lemoyne, and Belfour falls on that one. And that's just another example of, of how... Bob Joyce and Tony Herkus can light the fire, so to speak, even when they're playing a man short, having a very good opportunity at one end of the rink and then coming back and back checking. And Wisconsin was coming down two on two in that situation, not having, not really allowing, being allowed to outnumber the UND players in the defensive zone. Ian Kidd has one minute and 14 seconds to serve on his penalty as Jeff Sauer tries to get his Badgers charged up here. Wisconsin 0 for 1 on the power play tonight. This is their second chance. But the Sioux will eat up more time with that clearing. Loose puck at the side of the net. Look out. And it will come to Russ Perrin of the Sioux. Perrin draws the crowd. And Pat Ford has it for Wisconsin. Now number 9, Steve Tuttle. 3 on 2. Wisconsin coming in. Rolls to the corner where Dube and Ford crash for it. Held puck at a faceoff with 2.47 remaining in the first period. Nothing, nothing. Our score, 40 seconds to go on kids' penalty. Scott Koborinski there had a big night last night with a pair of goals. Scott, the senior from North Battleford, is uh, expected to have a big year. As uh, you know, all seniors are been through the process a few times. Not a senior. That's sophomore. a sophomore. That's a mystery. He's a sophomore. Pardon me. But he has come a long way from last year getting the opportunity to play. And that uh, opportunity allows you to build a lot of confidence. He's playing with that right now. And you see the stat there, UND's 7-0 record, their best start in 34 years. Stanton firing it in for the Badgers. Belfour back to get it for the Sioux. Lemoyne clears it. Stanton can't hold it in. Now Ford flips it back. Bouncing puck. Parent to Koborinski, and it's down to the Wisconsin end. Stanton along the boards. Here's Pat Ford in the clear, but it's too far. He's got to catch up with it. Centers it, and it's too far for Reback. Five seconds on the penalty. Reback sidesteps Koborinski. 
Rivek setting it up, out to the point. Here's a shot, stopped by Belfour. The rebound in front, slithers right to Belfour. Well, that's one reason why Gino obviously went after this young man in, a, in an outstanding play in, in making the save. He's a very big man. He plays the angles quite well. He's not too flashy. He just comes up with a good, steady effort. Two minutes and one second to go in the first period. North Dakota nothing, Wisconsin nothing. And a very, very different complexion to this game as compared to last evening as the Halloween night seemed to have everything going a little bit crazy. It does seem a little subdued in here tonight. Well, that's what happens when you beat a team as bad as UND beat Wisconsin last night. Uh, you know, the, the fans aren't as pumped up, and it's, it's obvious that perhaps Gino, Gino's squad isn't as pumped up as they were last night when they came, first came into this building. Well, if UND gets the goal, that'll get this crowd pumped up. And here's Scott Ricky, number 24. The pass is blocked by Tom Stegasaur. He takes a check from Bobbick. Comes back to Benson. Now Bobbick, sandwiched by a couple of Badgers. Oh, Stegasaur gave Bobbick an elbow to the back of the head, and there's no call there. Meanwhile, Benson takes the run at his man. Now Lee Davidson. Too far for Benson. A shot by Buns, blocked in front. Stegasaur's on top of it, doesn't see it. And a whistle here and a penalty coming up. 1.25 to go. We'll take a break. We've come a long way together here in Dakota. We've prospered and grown. First National Bank has been helping business dreams come true for more than 50 years. We've loaned more money to more businesses than any other bank around. We work hard to make your success our business. And we've become this area's business finance leader doing just that. Partnership commitment banking dakota style first national bank in grand forks a penalty on und's tarek howard is second of the period at 1835 and the badgers go on the power play here for the remainder of the first period Herkus sends it down the ice tony Herkus hooked from behind by sean sable and sable will get the gate right here interference well, a little bit of an acting job by Tony Herkus, but again, that good hustle on his part, he was breaking towards the other end of the rink after the puck. And Big Sable reached over the stick and just gave him a little hook on the shoulder and a, a little bit of a dive, but a, but a good call by the referee standing Johnny on the spot. But again, that's what the good wheels will do for you. When you get out there and, and hustle and, and give it 100% as Tony always does, that's going to cause a lot, a lot of opportunities for you and uh, cause the other team to do a lot of foolish things. So forget the power play. Sable for interference at 18.52. Incidentally, a programming note tonight. For those of you hoping to see Heart of the City and Spencer for Hire, you will see those programs following tonight's late news. So it's four on four hockey here for the rest of the first period. Wisconsin dumps it in. Ed Belfour lets it go back in the net. We've got less than a minute to go. Ian Kidd for North Dakota. Lead pass. Here's Brent Bobbick. Has Krumpenich behind him. Krumpenich tried to pick it up. Mendel clears it, but not out. Held in by Darren Fawcett. Stanton takes a hit from Krumpenich. Gets it off to a teammate, and it's cleared to center. Krumpenich, backhand pass to Darren Fawcett. Fawzen runs into a check there, and it's whistled offside. And, and by the way, people who do want to buy the Pat Sweeney masks, you send <laughs> $4.95 and three box tops to WDAZ TV, and we will. I know, just kidding. Please don't send your letters in $4.95. What, $3.95? Well, is it? Why would anyone want to buy that thing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, just a little rub off of Halloween night, Pat. Can't let can't That's right. Let's that should, down this quick. We're going to have to talk about last night's Halloween party, the Channel 8. <laughs> party a little later on if we have a chance wish we had tape on it but uh, unfortunately we don't <laughs> I'm glad they we, don't. the FCC might uh, <laughs> shut us down 22 seconds to go in the first period Badgers coming down for one more rush here Tony Granato trying to break the scoreless tie Granato a shot in front the rebound they fan on it as Belfort stood his ground Paul Ranheim fanning on the rebound Four seconds to go. 
Kirkus will kill the clock. That's the end of the first period. And Big Ed Bell, for example, did a heck of a save right there as Tony Granado was allowed to do a little wheeling and dealing for a change the first time this weekend. He's had that opportunity. And Ed came up and made one excellent save and on the rebound from Paul Reinheim. His leg just happened to be right, sitting right in the right spot and the puck hit him. It was uh, just happened to be in the right place at the right time at that time, at that moment. The saves in that period for Anderson of Wisconsin, nine, and Belfour of North Dakota, 11. So quite a different story from last night when it was a very lopsided uh, save statistic in favor of North Dakota the after one period. And the scoring opportunities they had there were a lot better than they had last evening. A little, a few more shots in the slot area, a little, little more choice opportunities, where last night they were getting shots in the blue line and from outside the perimeter of the middle of the rink. And uh, if, that, if, those, if that quality of shot is still allowed Wisconsin in the second, third period, I'm sure the score won't stay 0-0 too long. Well, we've seen everything tighten up here. No well, score, no pen, uh, not as many penalties as last night. North Dakota being whistled for three, Wisconsin two. I think, you know, obviously Coach Sauer talked to his squad and told them to keep their composure a little bit. Being in the penalty box is no way to beat the University of North Dakota hockey team. Uh, obviously with Tony Herkus and Bob Joyce on the power play, that's where they got most of their points this season, it seems, on the, on that power play, on the power play opportunities they've had. So if you stay out of the penalty box and play good tight defense, it'll pay off for you, and that's exactly why the score is what it is right now. And it is nothing to nothing. When we come back, a look at UND defenseman Mike Lemoyne. We'll have that after this. The Hallmark Company in Red Lake Falls announces a first time ever factory direct mobile home sale. Three days only, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. These quality Detroiter, Revere, and American mobile homes have been built at the Hallmark factory for over 25 years. If you've been waiting, now's the time to take advantage of the low interest rates and huge factory direct savings on your new home. Many single and double wide models to choose from at the factory in Red Lake Falls. It'll be worth the trip. Motorcraft quality parts spend their weekends meeting some grueling demand. Motorcraft quality delivers dependable performance in your car every day. Motorcraft from Ford. Pat Sweeney back with Travis Dunn at the UND Winter Sports Center. No score after one period between the Sioux and the Badgers. You know, it's awfully rare for a North Dakota high school player to jump right into the Western Collegiate Hockey Association, but Mike Lemoyne is an exception. Not only did Lemoyne make that jump, but he's playing for his hometown team. Until last year, the only games Mike Lemoyne played in the UND Winter Sports Center were high school games with Red River. But his dream was to play on that ice in college games with the Sioux. Yeah, it always has. We've had season, season tickets here ever since this rink opened up here. That's always kind of been my dream to play here, so it's all right. Last year, Lemoyne realized that dream, stepping from North Dakota high school hockey to the WCHA, but not without some adjustments and learning. It's unreal how fast it was compared to high school. It's just you get the puck of guys on you, right, like that. You got to move it really fast. That was the biggest adjustment there. It's hard for a freshman, you know. Guys that are coming, guys on the team are doing a good job of it this year. They're coming in, they're playing good hockey. Now. It's tough. It's a big change, at least from high school hockey. This year's better. You know, last year it was really hard. You know, I had to learn a lot, you know, moving up the puck a lot faster, but I like it a lot better now. It's, it's good hockey, fast, and it's really competitive, but it's a lot better playing at this level, I think. Lemoyne says one of the people who has helped him the most is UND's defense coach, John Marks. And Marks realizes Lemoyne's transition to college hockey was not an easy thing. You know, high school hockey is good hockey, but they're coming from few games, and uh, of course, level competition is not as great as it is in, uh, in college. Uh, but Mike Lemoyne is, is very coachable, and he's, and he's come a long ways. He's learned a lot, and uh, he's kind of, you know, bided his time a little bit uh, since his freshman year. Tough playing, you know, uh, last year when we had the likes of a Brad Berry and a Scott Sandlin and a Klaus, and kept a great attitude during that time and worked hard and has learned, and it's paying off right now. How would you describe him as a defenseman? 
Well, you know, nothing flashy. Uh, it just keeps it simple. Uh, you know, we work on trying to make, uh, you know, clear quickly and make the play quickly. And uh, that, that's uh, basically what, what uh, Mike is doing. I think as he gets some more experience and a little bit more confidence, I think you'll see him take the puck uh, a little more. Uh, he's learning how to make some uh, hits in the open ice. Uh, he, uh, in Denver, a terrific hip check on, on a young fellow that, you know, put him about four or five feet in the air. But uh, right now, Mike is uh, playing very steady. He's not a flashy player. He's just getting the job done. And that job for Lemoyne? Not get scored on. That's my <laughs> main goal. I hate getting scored on worse than anything. I just like to see our goals against down. That's my goal. My opinion is he's playing great, you know. Uh, He's just helped out tremendously. He's one of the guys that they said, you know, come into the season that, you know, we're going to need a lot out of him because we just didn't have too many defensemen coming back that played a lot of, didn't have too many hours. And, and Mike's coming in, he's playing like a veteran. I mean, he is a veteran. He's playing great. He seems to be doing and responding quite well to the challenges we're giving him. He's got unlimited potentials, uh, but he still has to uh, develop uh, uh, in certain areas and certain phases of the game uh, a lot better than what he is in order to be the kind of player that I, he would like to be and certainly that we would like to see him be. Let's get it, Dan. We're on the air, Jake. <laughs> I guess we're on the air. We've got monitor troubles here, and uh, welcome to live television, ladies and gentlemen. But anyway, it's great to see Mike Lemoyne uh, playing for UND. In fact, all the local Greater Grand Forks schools are represented on this duel. Mike Lemoyne from Red River and Steve Johnson, uh, formerly of Grand Forks Central, and Jeff Bowen of East Grand Forks. In our second intermission tonight, we will be taking a look at highlights of today's Sioux football game. The Sioux lost to Northern Colorado 36 to 33. And we'll also take a look at that big upset by Devils Lake in high school football. Devils Lake winning the North Dakota Class A quarterfinal game over defending state champion Bismarck 7-6. But right now, we'll tell you that it's nothing to nothing after one period. We'll be back in just a moment. Selection, quality, Affordability and service after the sale is what you'll find at the best looking corner in town. Every car is thoroughly inspected by our experienced technicians before it's placed on the lot. If it's a quality pre-owned car you're looking for, you should be looking at the selection at Wilcox & Malm. At Wilcox & Malm, if we're not proud of it, we won't sell it. Wilcox & Malm, Grand Forks. Where should you go when you want that ultimate pizza? Shakey's Pizza knows 100% real cheese, fresh homemade dough, and the finest ingredients. Available in any combination. Shakey's, where pizza's deliciously fun. Fun for all ages. And if you think great pizza is all they have, well, come see it all for yourself at Shakey's Good Taste, naturally. John Deere Equipment, the best line of farm machinery built today. Oppegards in Hillsboro, Gilby, and Park River offer sales, top-notch service, and parts for any model John Deere. Best service in the Red River Valley. Dino test with the latest equipment to keep your John Deere running in top shape. Check out their winter service specials. So for total service and parts, visit Oppegards in Hillsboro, Gilby, and Park River and keep your John Deere moving. Welcome back to the Winter Sports Center. Travis Dunn, nothing, nothing after one period. What do you think about the second period coming up here? Might things open up a bit? I don't think so. I think Wisconsin is going to play it real tight, close to the vest, so to speak, and uh, hopefully get that one goal that they need. You know, one goal is all you need in a game if their team doesn't score any goals. And the way they're playing defensively right now, that's a very good possibility. You know, even with the explosion last night, these teams are still one and two in terms of defense in the WCHA, so things are kind of reverting back to form the way they came in. Uh, both teams averaged only about three goals a game. Well, you know, they had a, last night was one of those nights when everyone got carried away with just the fact that they were scoring goals. And, they, and once you start that trend, it's hard to stop it sometimes to get back into defensive thinking of game, the defensive aspect of the game of hockey. Why couldn't the Sioux have come up? I'm sorry to interrupt you, but why couldn't the Sioux have come up with some of those goals in Madison in last year's playoffs? They didn't have the personnel <laughs> they have out there this year, possibly. It, that's hard to say. It's uh, one of those things when, when the puck starts going in the net, We've all seen strange things in, in the game of hockey. Uh, football's the same way. Any any sport, you know, some nights uh, everything's going to go in. 
suddenly nothing's going away, going to go in. And the way they're playing tonight, they're playing close to the vest. They're playing very tight defensively. UND is playing quite well, just that Wisconsin is playing that much better than they did last night. You're talking about crazy things. Wait till you see the highlights on this uh, football game at UND today. There were some crazy things going on there, and we'll take a look at some of that in our second intermission. The complexion, we talked about this a little bit, but let's get into it right now. The complexion of each team has really changed from last year. A lot of new people. Well, the biggest change for UND has to be the fact they lost three defensemen. Glenn Klotz, Scott Sandlin, who went to the Montreal Canadiens, and Brad Berry, who went to the Winnipeg Jets, who was only a junior last year, would have been a senior. Uh, the defense is playing extremely well for the age that they are. I'm very impressed with Russ Parent, the way he's come out here and stepped right in. You know, when I was playing, everyone said, well, gee, you know, you have to kind of stand back, play JV for a couple of years, and then slowly come in and play. These guys are stepping in at 17, 18, 19 years of age and playing like veterans. Uh, it must be their genes or something because it's supposed to be harder than what they're playing, right? And it's supposed to be harder than what it is. They're making that transition very, very easily. And it's, it, it must be, they're, they're must be very talented young men, and they're playing like that. They're playing very well, very heads up. And the mistakes they do make are being covered up by the fact that the forwards are all coming back and playing extremely well for them. Wisconsin lost Dave Maley. They lost Ernie Vargas. You can go on the list of the, of the players they lost. But as Scott, uh, Coach Sauer said, they were playing mostly for themselves last year for the big NHL contract. And as we talked about last night, that's something every school uses as a recruiting tool, I'm sure, is the fact that, hey, come here. The scouts are going to be here to watch you play. But at the same time, it works against you in that situation. So both teams are very different from last year. But uh, that's the great thing about college hockey. Every four years, every you know, new players get to step in and take over. And uh, you know, it's been nine years since I played, and it's you know they've changed over quite a few times in that process. But the play is still uh, is still fun to watch college hockey. For a change, UND lost a couple of forwards from last year, Chris Jensen and Brian Williams. But the change is, for a change, those guys were actually seniors, and they didn't leave early. Well, you know, back to when I was here, Doug Smell was the first one ever to go early, and uh, you know that's been the trend ever since. But you can't really blame the guys for not staying four years. If someone offers you $100,000 if you're in law school, not to finish to quit law school and after year two and come work for a law firm, you're going to take it. So the same thing can be said for the hockey player. You know, if someone's going to dangle that much money in front of you, know, it's fair to say no. Uh, you got to have a lot of respect for guys like Bob Joyce who have that opportunity and are saying, well, listen, I'm going to ba stand back here and play. And, it's, and he's got much better very quickly because of it. And he's a junior this year. He's playing extremely well. And that's going to add to his value down the line. Uh, whether or not he's going to be here four years is another story. When you lose a Williams, when you lose a Jensen and Sandlin and Klotz and uh, Brad Berry, people like that, really just a one edition of Tony Herkus makes you forget all about it, doesn't it? Well, that's, again, that's the great thing about college hockey. Players leave, but there's always someone coming in behind the back door, so to speak, and taking over and, and playing very well. Tony has done that. Uh, he's, just a, he's just a tremendous hockey player. In my mind, he's a kind of a combination of Rick Zapernick, Kevin Maxwell, and Mark Taylor. Very smooth, very heady. Can pass the puck and shoot the puck and do everything. And, and that's going to light the fire of a lot of his teammates as well. It, it carries over. I don't know if you've been talking to any of the Wisconsin media here, but uh, down the row here, they are just shaking their heads. They just can't believe what Herkus has done. It just improved in a year's time. Well, that's what the, being in the Canadian Olympic program will do for you. He played world-class competition last year, played in Moscow, played against the best Soviet athletes on, on the ice surface. Uh, you know, if you play against people like that and you're around them, you see what they can do, you learn. You, know, you have to. You're put in a situation, you play 85 games. I'm sure he's happy to be back here, but he's also ma matured as an individual as well. He matured as a hockey player, but he's a, a much uh, nicer young man than what he was here. Really, not to say he wasn't before. Nice is not the word I wanted to use, but... He just matured all in an all-around, uh, you know, the all-around human being, I guess, is the word you want to use. Yeah, we, we know what you mean. Yeah, sort of. <laughs> I don't know. Like that. No, no, it's, it's great to see Tony back, and Sioux hockey fans are not likely to complain. Well, we're moments away from the second period, and we'll have the action for you right after this. When it comes to hockey equipment, the home of economy has it all. CCM and Bauer skates, pants, pads, gloves, and helmets by famous CCM and Cooper, the finest in Christian hockey sticks. A large selection of figure skates for women and girls awaits you too. And your present hockey and figure skates are worth dollars in trade on a new pair. Compare selection, quality, expert service, and price, and you'll find the finest at savings 
at the home of economy in Grand Forks. GR Graphics Incorporated has a simple goal, to be your single source for copiers by Sharp. GR Graphics selection makes it possible to have the right copier for your office needs, like the new Sharp SF9550. It can copy from two separate originals onto one two-sided copy in four colors, has a 20-bin sorter, four-way paper feed system, and can make 50 copies a minute. You can count on GR Graphics for aggressive pricing and excellent qualified service. A simple goal for GR Graphics to make it simple for you. Call them. No one responds like GR Graphics. Fargo Grand Forks. North Dakota nothing and Wisconsin nothing as we head to the second period in Grand Forks, North Dakota. Don't forget, those of you who were hoping to see the ABC programming tonight, Art of the City and Spencer for Hire, you will see those programs tonight following the late news. Art of the City and Spencer for Hire following tonight's late news. Is anybody home on Saturday night to watch these shows? <laughs> <laughs> Is anybody watching us? All I, dozens of our fans watching I, tonight. I certainly hope so, since Channel 8 is the only station bringing you Sioux Hockey with UND-based announcers. Ooh. <laughs> okay. And we'll continue in January, as we talked about last night, with the Boston University Boston College Series on a Friday and a Sunday. Boston College on Friday, January 2nd. That'll be our next televised game. And then Boston U, Sunday, January 4th at 2 o'clock in the afternoon. That's going to be interesting. I've never done an afternoon That's game. I've never seen an afternoon game in this building. And it's uh, going to be interesting to see the response they get to that game. It is at a time when the university students will not be here, as it will be Christmas break, or just you're getting close to the end of Christmas break. New Year's break, anyway. As you take a look at the hockey cheerleaders, the amazing thing in, in that group of cheerleaders is a young lady named Kathy Marshall, who <laughs> I have known since I since she was 11 years old, and uh, her father F. John Marshall in Grand Forks, a very good friend of most of the two hockey players, uh, a person who has been very gracious to open his home to a lot of us uh, during the course of our careers at UND, and has become a very good friend of a lot of players over the years. And it's funny to see that uh, someone can, well, it's not funny to see, but obviously people grow up as uh, start to show the years passing by when someone who's 11 years old all, is all of a sudden a, a, a freshman at University of North Dakota and also a cheerleader. In other words, you feel old. Yeah, I feel old. <laughs> That's all you had to say. Feel old, yeah. <laughs> Heck, I feel old when I look at Steve Johnson and Mike Lemoyne. That's right. Remember when they played high school hockey here? I was coaching at Central High School when I was back here finishing my degree off, and Steve was back for who decided not to come back for his last year, his senior year at Central High School and play junior in Alberta. And I talked quite a few talks with him, and he, his goal was to play at the University of North Dakota. He'd always dreamed of it, and uh, he's one of the very lucky ones from this area who has come out and made the team and done very well for himself. And again, talking back about Judd Sondriol, who worked so hard and didn't quite get the dream of playing at Wisconsin and playing in this building. It's one of those dreams that just dies very, very slowly, and, and one that you, you just can never, uh, never actually forget. I also feel old whenever I see Jeff Bowen, but that's just because he's Jeff Bowen. <laughs> he has taken up where Jeff Bradall has left off and uh, likes to give certain reporters a lot of heat, I might add. Well, but Jeff uh, likes to like make things interesting, yes. <laughs> we start the second period, each team with a man in the box. Tara Howard for North Dakota, Sean Sable for Wisconsin. Howard has 28 seconds to go on his penalty and then the Sioux will have a brief, brief power play. Wisconsin captain Tony Granato now behind his net. Here's Paul Ranheim, number 25, from Edina. Cutting around Darren Fawzen, and it's thrown in. Ian Kidd back for North Dakota. Around to Fawzen. Now Tony Herkus retreats as Tarek Howard steps out of the penalty box. The Sioux have a 14-second power play. The lead pass for Johnson, and it's offside. And again, it's not necessarily the fact that UND is playing any worse than they did last night. It's the fact that Wisconsin is playing a lot tighter in their own zone, not allowing the players such as Tony Herkus to wheel and deal. If you take a look at Steve Johnson, the junior from Grand Forks, North Dakota, who we talked about who decided to go up to Alberta, or leaving Grand Forks and his family, heading up there in his senior year of high school to mature as a hockey player, playing as many as 80 hockey games up there. In a, and obviously the decision worked out well for him because he's doing quite well here at the University of North Dakota now. Sean Sable still has eight seconds to go on the Wisconsin penalty. We've got 19 minutes and 16 seconds to go in the second period. 
And we've got zeros on the scoreboard. Pat Ford on the faceoff with Scott Koborinski. And it's back to Mike Lemoyne. Around it goes. Parks pokes it out. Ford catches up. Sables out of the box, and both teams are at full strength. Here's Lemoyne. Hits the back of the net now. Loose puck in front. Look out. Taken by Dube and cleared. Sean Sable retrieves for the Badgers. Avoids Dube. Flips it all the way down the ice. This will be icing. And the game of hockey is one of mistakes when a team makes a mistake. Uh, the obviously obvious end of it, end result of that is usually a goal. And tonight, neither team has really made any major mistakes. And everyone's covering up for each other. And uh, it's unfortunate that the first mistake could be the one that decides the victor in this game. Here's another Winnipeg product, Russ Parent. One of several Winnipeggers in this game tonight. Glenn Revac right there, number 16, another Winnipeg product. Dumps it in. And back to get it is Russ Parent. Over for Scott Dube of Park River. Tuttle trying to poke the puck loose. He does. Lemoyne sends it around the boards. Now Park sends it to center ice. Goborinsky tries to catch up with it. He's got it now. Dishes off to Dube. A backhander. Oh, and a goal! What a play by Dube and Goborinsky. Well, that really wasn't the mistake we were talking about. That was just good hustle on the Scott, part of Scott Koborinsky and Scott Dube. And Koborinsky made a heck of a behind the back kind of a type of spinorama move to the puck that shot out. The puck was bouncing. Sable never had much opportunity to get it, but Koborinsky turns and just dumps it blindly almost. But he kind of knew Scott Dube would be there. And a heck of a shot as uh, Dean Anderson came out and did all he could to make the save. But Steve Koborinsky just did a spinorama to avoid going offside. A little dump pass to Dube. The backhand just making it up over top of Dean Anderson's pads into the net. Uh, not really what you call a classic mistake, but the end result was a goal. Scott Dube with his sixth goal of the season. Koborinski on the assist. Time of the goal, 140, and it's 1-0 in the second period in favor of UND. They are giving Mal Parks an assist as well. And that's going to give a big lift to UND as uh, now the ice has been broken. And usually when the first one goes in, it makes it a lot easier for the second one to go in. So they'll see if they can carry the momentum over onward into the second period. From the face off, it's back. Tarek Howard takes a poke at it. Nakaneshny sends it back. Wisconsin intercepts. The Sioux send it back. Now Stanton. Tried to dump it in, knocked down at the line by Howard. Held in by the Badgers, and Benson stops it in front. Here's Crumpetich for North Dakota. Has Bowen breaking, tried to spring it to him, and it's intercepted by Geisen. Now Sagasaur slapping it in. That's icing on Wisconsin. With 17.46 remaining in this second period. Next week, UND will go on the road to Michigan Tech. And Wisconsin will be at home against Colorado College. Oh, yes. Lovely downtown Houghton, Michigan. Quite a place. <laughs> Average snowfall of about 140 inches of snow a winter. We went there one time, and they snow blow their roads out. And you could just barely see about the first story of most of the houses because they just get so much snow over the course of the wintertime. Quite a place. Well, I heard that in Greeley, Colorado today, there was uh, quite a few inches of snow. So at least the Sioux football team wasn't on the road. Something to look forward to anyway, isn't it, <laughs> Winter time. No, no, thank you. <laughs> Back of the net, Krumpenich in front to Nakaneshny, and it skitters off. Here's Kidd, a shot from the point. Stopped by Anderson on the pad save. Kidd again, a drive just wide. Now Krumpenich gets the rebound, trying to hold it in. He's tied up, and here's Granado stealing it away. Dumps it down. Gary Shuchik after it, but it's icing. Speaking, <coughs> excuse me, speaking of cold and snow, were you ever one of those ones that sat in the Watch the Vikings and during all those fun years of 40 below snow, snowing days of uh, football. <laughs> I didn't go to many of those Vikings games. It was hard to get tickets, but yes, I spent a few cold days out at Met Stadium, as, uh, as we did today at Memorial Stadium in Grand Forks. That's true, but you're getting, you're, you're, that's your job to do it now. Before <laughs> the snow, when it's that's that cold to watch a football uh, game, I don't know. I thought I was going to watch it on TV. I can see why the Vikings want the Dome, but I don't understand why the Twins want the Dome. Uh oh <laughs> we won't get into that one back to the action Ian Kidd out at the point Sue with a one nothing lead shot by Davidson block kid with another shot block 
Wisconsin getting down in front of these shots, and Granado comes out with a two-on-two -two with Ranheim. Granado tripped by Darren Fawson, no call. Ranheim, a whip shot, saved by Bill Hoare. Well, young Darren Fawson got away with one there as the referee never, never saw the penalty, but he did reach out and re grab Tony Granado, knock him down, leaving Paul Ranheim to beat two two players. And you see Ed Belfour there, number 29, just came out, cut the angles down, and made the good save, uh, not giving Paul Reinheim much to shoot at. Belfour, the MVP for the Winkler Manitoba Flyers, and later joined the Winnipeg South Blues. That's right. Is that right? The team that Russ Perrins, they, they're allowed to pick up a goalie from another team in that situation, and, they, and he was the one who played, more, and I believe, all the games for the Fort Perry Blues. And Belfour named the top goalie in the Manitoba Junior Hockey League. Wisconsin, Sean Sable over to John Bice. Number 11, the freshman ahead to Revac. Revac into Sue Ice, a whip shot wide. Comes all the way out. And UND starts back. Davidson's pass is blocked by Bice. Sable in front. Davidson bothering him. Picking it up in front. Oh, Ricky centered it. Hit Anderson in the stick, and he had to pounce on that one. And just again, good hustle by Lee Davidson coming in playing the body. And for a little guy, he's pretty feisty as he just steps right in there and plays the body on him. And the, the centering pass almost went off Dean Anderson to the net. But uh, speaking of the Manitoba Junior Hockey League, that's where I played my hockey. And believe it or not, I scored six goals during the regular season <laughs> and one during the playoffs. I had one breakaway, by the way. And that was the last goal you scored, right? I, something like that. I think, yeah, <laughs> I, I scored some in JV hockey here, too. As the guys in the chucker were falling on the I, floor laughing. You didn't score any here. Centering pass in front of shot by Joyce, and it's split high. So I got a hole in one, though. All right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> Swooping in his fat port. In a hole in what? A sock? <laughs> Parent brings it in, and it's offside, and Steve Johnson was in too far. Is there a hockey game going on here tonight, Pat? <laughs> well, well, you know, that one you in hold there. The, but Burge Foss looked that up, and you hold the record of going the most games at UND without scoring a goal. That was 62. Well, the funny record I ever could probably get, so I had to go for something. <laughs> 60, so I went for broke for no, it. Is it 62 games? 62 games, and, yes. But you do have a championship ring to show for it, right? That's right. All right. So I guess we can't come, and, you know, I can't complain too much about okay. that. Okay. For nothing, <laughs> North Dakota, 16 minutes remaining in period number two. Paul Stanton, number five, clears it down the ice for Wisconsin. Now Geisness in a race for it. Lemoyne on top of him. They collide hard in the corner. Now another Sioux player goes down. Herkus brings it away. Three on three, come the Sioux. Herkus tries to split the defense, can't do it. Now Geisness, number 23. And that is whistled offside. And a little overzealous play there by uh, one of the Wisconsin players that he couldn't stop from going offside. Tried to straddle the line, but got pulled off a little bit and went offside in the process. Wisconsin leads this overall series with 31 wins. UND has beaten the Badgers 23 times. And six games ended in ties. Tonight, it, <coughs> excuse me, tonight is the 61st meeting between these teams. And there's always a certain magic in the bill in any building when the Wisconsin Badgers or the Minnesota Gophers or any of the Big Ten teams show up here simply because a small college like UND can play a number a strong power division one team. There's Parks with a weak shot turned aside by Anderson. Parks pokes the rebound back of the net. Kobarinski giving chase but Ranheim picks it up. Duke bangs him into the boards. Granado on the lead pass. Oh his teammate overskated it. Shuchuk and it's poked back by Parks. The Badgers regain control. Here's Granado. Trying to get around Howard. Slap back in. Gloved by Belfour, and he covers up. There's always a certain bragging rights when a small college at the University of North Dakota, which only has one Division I program, the only, only Division I program in North Dakota, can beat a University of Wisconsin. It has Division I football, basketball, swimming, Tiddlywinks team, <laughs> and 50,000 students to go with it. That's right. Here's Paul Ranheim from Edina. Led Edina to the 1984 Minnesota State High School Championship. Off the draw, comes back to Sable. A whip shot, sticked aside by Belfour. The rebound, Revac can't get his stick down on it as the puck was flipping. Now Tuttle to Revac. Tuttle tries to get it on his stick and it's taken away by Ian Kidd. Kidd tucks it around for Fawcett. Fawson lost it out to center ice, and Sable is there for the Badgers, and the puck was knocked down by a high stick. 
and UND having a bit of problem moving the puck in their offense in their defensive zone as the faceoff comes all the way down to the Wisconsin end of the rink was the Wisconsin player had high stick it and a teammate of his touched the puck. The play a little bit scrambly right now as both teams are playing it very tight close to the vest as we talked about earlier not letting they don't want to make another mistake to cause a goal and just want to keep it as close as possible going into the third period and that's what Wisconsin being on the road wants to do keep it close hope for a break. Here's Bowen trying to get a shot off and that's blocked at the defense. 1-0 North Dakota, 1430 to go, second period of play. As Ian Kidd gets it ahead to Bowen. Now Krumpenich picking it up. Krumpenich to Steve Johnson. Out to the point, Darren Fawcett. In front, Krumpenich all along, backhand, oh, and it's right. Johnson centers right to the Wisconsin player. And that's Revac clearing it for the moment. Now Steve Tuttle for Wisconsin. Dumps it in. Darren Fawcett, number two, retrieved. Steve Johnson backhands to neutral ice. Knocked down there by Ian Kidd. Kidd trying to weave in and out. Now he fires it in as the Sioux complete the line change. John Bice, number 11. The freshman from Madison, Wisconsin. Lemoyne slaps it back. Bouncing puck now. The Badgers trying to regroup. Rob Mandel. And the puck hit the door, apparently, the open door on the bench, and thus the whistle. Well, talk about someone shaking your head. You know, Dean Anderson was totally beaten on the play, and the puck was put in behind him when he came out the other side of the net, and no one was in position to slam it into the net. And uh, one of those situations where Dean Anderson kind of had a little bit of luck on his side, but that's why supposed to be a goaltender in this league is all about. A little bit, you have to be good to be lucky and lucky to be good. Yes, sir. Here's Paul Stanton. Stick save, Belfour. Sagasaur in the corner now. Tries to center it. Belfour blocks that. Parent muscling with Sagasaur. Now Gravelin runs into Davidson. Loose puck. Geisness can't get the stick down on it, and it comes outside for Paul Stanton from Foxborough, Massachusetts. Oh, Belfour loses his goalie stick. Sagasaur centers it. Stolen away by Davidson. Cleared but not out. Loose puck there at the blue line. Everybody misses it. Now Belfour is playing with uh, Mike Lemoyne's stick. And that is legal. But if a player has a broken stick, he has to drop it. But in the meantime, now Belfour with the puck down at the Wisconsin end goes back and gets his actual goalie stick. So we're all squared away. But a heads up play by Lemoyne giving Ed Belfour at least something to use. Long shot by Geisnitz, blocked at the defense by Parent. And Parent starts back. Slithers the pass to Brent Bobbick. Here come the Sioux, three on two. Bobbick a shot, just wide. The rebound comes to Todd Geisnitz, number 23. Geisnitz sends it down, Belfour with the stop. Mike Lemoyne skates by. There you see Lemoyne's old stick sitting in the corner. He went to the bench to get a new one. And a whistle here. 12 minutes to go. We'll be back. We've come a long way together here in Dakota. We've prospered and grown. First National Bank has been helping business dreams come true for more than 50 years. We've loaned more money to more businesses than any other bank around. We work hard to make your success our business. And we've become this area's business finance leader doing just that. Partnership. Commitment. Banking Dakota style. Dakota style. First National Bank in Grand Forks. Apparently, the officials are taking care of some patchwork in front of the Wisconsin goal. And at this point in the game, it's very evident that UND's bump game is starting to take its toll on the Badger hockey team as uh, every opportunity they have, they're not taking a not a big shot, but just enough of a bump and, uh, you know, knocking the Wisconsin players around a little bit. And that tires them out and wears them out. And uh, coming on this period, especially, Wisconsin players are starting to drag a little bit, starting to turn when they should be getting through the UND players, just trying to save that energy as much as possible. And the tide is starting to swing so, ever so slowly, but a little bit at a time. And you can see it's starting to happen. As we wait for the repairs to be finished, we'll be right back.
If this is what you anticipate all summer, the Ski Shop is the place for you. They have everything for winter fun but the hill. Fashion winter wear that will keep the whole family warm and looking great. And of course, the largest selection of skis and accessories in North Dakota. Let the Ski Shop help you get the most out of this winter. Now the Ski Shop is more than just a ski shop. Hi, this is Terry from the Ski Shop, and very soon we'll be offering you something new and exciting at the Ski Shop, downtown Grand Fork. It'll be worth the wait. We're ready to go at the Winter Sports Center. 12 minutes to go in the second period, and North Dakota ahead of Wisconsin by a score of 1-0 on a goal by Scott Doob at 140 of the second period. Steve Johnson ahead for Tony Herkus. Herkus, the puck was in his skates and he didn't see it. Now Johnson pokes it. Renato tying him up. Ranheim, number 25, takes a kick at it. Loose puck, Herkus over to Tarek Howard at the point. Howard, a shot just wide. The rebound comes to Ranheim. Now Herkus steals away. Tried to get around Ranheim and a nice play there by Tony Herkus. Loose puck in the corner, McKenzie. Loses it to Herkus. Now Granado picks it up for the Badgers. Granado slapping it in. Gary Shuchuk takes a big hit from Tom Benson. Ranheim digging after it. A whistle here. And again, that's the bump game. UND has always had a tradition of having a very strong physical game. Not necessarily a dirty one, but a very physical one. And that does wear their, the opponents down. And as we talked about before the break, uh, Wisconsin you know, is starting to look like they're going to drag a little bit. Their heads are hanging on the bench a little bit. They're only down one nothing, but if they don't get that energy to come back, it can be a long way to the end of the game. So they bring the faceoff back, and it'll be Scott Koborinski for North Dakota against Pat Ford of Wisconsin. Sable moving in. He whips it to the goal, and Belfour hangs on to that one in the breadbasket. And Ed Belfour is a little bit surprised to see that one get through as the shot came through traffic in front of the net. But Ed uh, playing the angles as he should. The play, if he's out where he should be, and the, the puck does come through, it will hit him uh, if he played the angle correct. Players get a little itchy on the draw, and they'll have to wait for Parks and Revac to get back outside the circle. As referee Derek Martin says, let's do it again. <laughs> One to nothing, North Dakota. Ian Kidd lofts the puck out to center ice and it goes into the Wisconsin zone. Dube chasing after it. He runs his man into the board. That was John Bice, a freshman from Wisconsin. Four player tie up and a face off coming up here. And again, Scott Dube, not the prettiest player in the world, not the most talent, but he, he makes up for it in the fact that he works his rear end off every time he steps on the ice. In that case, he just almost out hustled the defenseman into the boards and when he did get there he made sure he planted a good hit on him so again that comes back to the old bump game you gotta love those walk-ons <laughs> every game we throw that one in there yeah <laughs> now wisconsin is intercepted by darren Fawson, a big shot and a stick stop by anderson Fawson scored on a similar shot last week against northern michigan a big boomer from around the blue line Dube bumps Tuttle into the boards. Here's Ford picking it up, but Kidd wraps him up. Tuttle again now, centering it. Bouncing puck, oh, and it just goes wide. Fawson checking Tuttle. Here's Revac with the puck. Koborinski all over him. Still a loose puck underneath all those skates and sticks. No whistle yet. Squirts loose. Centering pass attempt is blocked. Koborinski flips it out to center. Dube tried the breakout. That didn't click. Now Fawzen flips it out for the Sioux. Stopped by Stanton. Off the boards. And here's Ian Kidd. Back to Stanton. Let's play catch here. Parks taking some swipes at Stanton. Intercepted by the Sioux. Fawzen loses it, though. Here's Stanton, a long drive. Blocked by Bell for the rebound. Prevalent. Oh, stopped in front. The rebound and another save. Two big stops in front. Still a loose puck. The backhand is just wide by Geisman. Belfort comes out to set it up for Kidd, and it flips into the crowd. Well, if there's any question of Ed Belfort's ability, there just came to, to show right there as he came on and made a couple of excellent saves on Paul. One on Paul Gravelin. As you see Paul Gravelin break around, the long shot from the point, Ed, unfortunately, doesn't hold the rebound very well, and 
he lost his shot. As you notice, his gloves right down on the ice. He sticks that big leg of his out and makes a second save on the rebound. UND a little guilty of not blocking out the Wisconsin forwards and giving him second opportunities. If that happens throughout the rest of the game, you're going to see a few goals uh, put by him. But again, a couple of excellent saves by Ed Belfort. Use the blocking glove, the catching glove, and the pass. That's Belfort making good use of his equipment on that flurry. And here's Granado breaking in one-on-one. -on -one. Can't get around Lemoyne, though. And a penalty coming up here. Penalty on North Dakota. Now Granado centers at the Stanton. Can't get his stick down on it as Bowen was tying him up. Now Bowen goes at it with Stanton. And Mike Bowen Lemoyne. To, go ahead. Okay, and Mike Lemoyne a little guilty there. He played Tony Granado very well, but as Tony was being stopped by him, he took an extra swipe at him and took a shot at his head. Now, see, Mike plays him very well, plays the, plays the body all the way on him, doesn't give him much opportunity, but watch the hand come up and give him a swipe across the head as the play goes on. Okay, right there, a boom. Okay, that's a that's a no-no in the referee's book, but again, Mike just a little guilty of playing it a little bit too tough in that situation. He had the man beat, and I think he knows he made a pretty good mistake on that play. But then that's something that uh, us defensemen were known to do now and then. LaPointe for roughing at 11.04, and it was obvious what Bowen was trying to do there is draw a Wisconsin player off the ice along with the UND player. And that's the difference in between tonight's and last night's game is the fact that the players were being drawn into those penalties tonight. They're skating away from them, and that's just good team play. So Wisconsin on the power play. They have yet to score tonight. Shot by Shuchuk, hits traffic in front, and the rebound comes to Granado. Out to Chris Tansel, number 22. Granado now. Granado, a shot blocked. Comes back to Gary Shuchuk, number 26. Around the boards, Tarek Howard will get this for the Sioux. Flips it off the glass, it comes back at a funny angle and goes all the way down to the Wisconsin end. The Badgers have Granado, Ranheim up front along with Sean Sable. The big defenseman positioned right in front of the net on his power play. Here's Tansel losing the puck. Herkus backhands it, but not out. Ranheim weaving his way in the backhand and a big save by Belfour. Well, I think if Paul Ranheim had that one back, he'd pull it to his forehand. He had a little more time than he thought he had. And the backhand shot went right up in the head of Belfour's stomach. He just kind of sat there and watched it come right to him, so there was no real danger in the puck getting by him in that situation. You see if Paul Ranheim make the move beat a couple of defense and there's defense and guilty of swinging at him instead of going and playing the body and a backhand shot right into his stomach I'm sure if he had the opportunity over again he would take it to his forehand 113 to go on the penalty to Lemoyne 809 to go in the period one nothing North Dakota puck squirts outside the line here's Koborinsky one on one Koborinsky loses the puck and runs into Chris Tansel now he sends it back to kill some more time Kid fires it down the ice, and that'll lead up yet more time. 50 seconds to go on the fiddling. Sean Sable has it. The big defenseman losing it now to Doob, who can't get the stick down on it. Now it dribbles out to the line, and here come the Badgers, two on two. Ranheim with Shuchik. Now he dumps it off, intercepted by Koborinsky, and he's got Doob in the clear. Here's Scott Doob going in, all alone, a shot, save the rebound, it's an escape. Doob centers it again. A penalty coming up here on Wisconsin. In front, Doob another shot and it hits Tarek Howard in the stick. Howard has the puck, out to the point, Herkus, over to Kidd. Delayed penalty here on Wisconsin. Kidd trying to get away from the defender. Now Howard in the corner, centers it. Stopped by Granado, and there's the whistle, a flashing call. Well again, the good hustle by Scott Doob as he saw the opening he broke for it. He saw his his forward partner on the ice saw him give the long feed pass and watch the defense come down and try to chop this tree down folks winds up and whack that one looks like oh that hurts from just sitting up here but a good shot and the rebound comes out and he almost got the stick up to get it knocked into the open net but uh, again defensively has not much of an opportunity to stop him in that play he just gonna have to do anything he can to stop him or distract him in that case he got a two-minute penalty for it and a big save there by Anderson as North Dakota has five seconds to go on the penalty to LeMoyne. The penalty to Wisconsin, Gary Shuchuk for slashing at 12.59. But again, I guess that's what you classify as a, as a good penalty as they came in yeah. to try and stop him and detract from getting a good shot on him. So now LeMoyne's out of the box and it's a five on four power play. 
Trumpetich at the left point. Steve Johnson replaces Lemoyne on the ice. Johnson with the puck back to Kidd. He cranks and fires. Oh, just wide. Comes out to the center ice area, and Kidd goes back to reorganize that UND power play. Here's the ringleader of the Herkus Circus, Tony Herkus to Steve Johnson. He fires it in. Joyce giving chase with Tuttle. Picking it up is Herkus out to the point. Krumpetich over to Ian Kidd now. Back to Krumpetich. To Herkus. They've got Joyce in front. Here's Krumpetich. Fans on the shot. And the Badgers clear. 109 to go on the penalty to Shuchik. 1 0 North Dakota. The Sioux on a power play here. And they're looking a little ragged right there as Herkus gets the loose puck. Sidestepped one defender. Gets by Rivak. Herkus moving in. Over to Joyce, and it's hard off his stick. Herkus again. Back to Joyce. Sue trying to set up the power play. Herkus has Kidd. Kidd, back to Herkus. To Ian Kidd, a shot just wide. Rebound to Krumpetich. Almost broken up by Wisconsin. Now they get it. Pat Ford, and he clears it. With 20 seconds to go on the Wisconsin penalty. Time for one more rush here. And Ian Kidd leads the way, but Ranheim gets a stick on it. Now it dribbles to the red line. Here's Bob Joyce. Knocked off his stick. Ranheim has it taken away by Ian Kidd. Here's Kidd moving in a shot wide. The penalty's over, and both teams are at full strength. In front, Crawford is just shot at a goal! Well, I give him the opportunity when you have a couple of minutes to sit there and figure out where you're going to shoot it. In that case, there wasn't a Wisconsin defense anywhere around, and he would have left stand there, make Gene Anderson make the first move, and he deposited the far side of the net. But again, Tony Herkus, there's a shot by Ian Kidd. Tony Herkus doing most of the work as he set up behind the net. And now watching Mick, watch Mickey Krumpetich come in the top of your screen, Wisconsin players are guilty of turning their back and not, not boxing him out. Here he is, standing there about one, two, three, four seconds, three seconds, something like that. Given that much time, there's not much Gene Anderson to do. But again, Tony Herka standing there. There's Mickey all by himself in front of the net. Given that much time, I think even I could have scored. <laughs> nah. <laughs> but Mickey Krumpetich did score his fifth goal of the season from Herkus and Joyce at 15.07. And North Dakota now enjoys a 2-0 lead on Wisconsin. Ricky waits for the puck, and now here's Davidson. Tried to get it ahead. Here's Bobbick picking it up, but it was whistled offside. 4.38 to go in the second period. And young Mr. Bobbick was almost presented with a beautiful opportunity there, but the puck did go off the back of the Wisconsin defenseman skates, and it just put him offside by inches. Let's take a look at Lee Davidson here, who a uh, freshman from Winnipeg. As he says, he's from, from born in Winnipeg, but lived in Calgary. Just put Winnipeg down for the heck of it. <laughs> now Wisconsin trying to get out of its own zone, and Lee Davidson fires it back in. Number five is Paul Stanton. Fans on it. Now he gets it. Intercepted by Davidson. Backhand wide. He couldn't get good wood on it. Now Bobek takes a run at his man. Stanton tried to clear. It's not out. Ricky holding it in. Ricky again now. Ricky back to Lemoyne. On the far side, Russ Perrin. Perrin wrapped up by Paul Gravel, and they go down in the corner. A whistle there and a faceoff coming up, and we'll take a break. It's harvest time at Valley Honda with 1986 Honda ATV carryover models specially priced while they last. Choose from three and four wheelers like Big Red, Honda Four Tracks, and more. All built for a good time, anytime. As with any motorized vehicle, safety plays a big part in the total enjoyment. Honda ATVs have many built-in safety features. Visit Valley Honda today and ask about the fall lineup of Honda ATVs and save while the harvest specials are hot. <laughs> Long night for Jeff Sauer, but not as long as last night. Wisconsin only two goals down here, 2-0. Here's 
with 3.55 remaining in the second period. Right off the faceoff. They try to freeze it to no avail, and Tuttle catches up with it. Tarek Howard pokes it off his stick. Now Dub on the near side, losing it. Cleared the center. Dub firing it back in. Sean Sable, number 28. Too far for Pat Ford, who is stood up at the blue line by Benson. Belfour makes the save. And the play continues. Tarek Howard trying to spring attempt, and that's blocked. Benson goes back for it to Parks. And now Koborinski catching up. Koborinski ahead to Doom. It <laughs> did not click. Howard fans on the shot at the blue line, and he runs into his man Ford, and a penalty coming up on Tarek Howard. Well, Big Tarek, in that opportunity, sh perhaps should have stopped the puck and taken the shot, but he tried to one-time it. When he missed the puck, the Wisconsin player was on his way, and he had to step in front of him to stop him to impede his progress. And Big Tarek's having a bit of a rough evening this evening, but he makes up with it in his heart. Every mistake he, every mistake he makes, or when he does make a mistake, he comes back twice as hard to make up for it. So, uh, again, you have to give him a lot of credit for working as hard as he does. But a few shifts ago, I noticed there was four freshmen and a sophomore on, on the ice, and the, first, the sophomore was Mike Lemoyne. <laughs> so between all of them, they had about 15, 20 games up between them, all of them, as UND college hockey. And it's pretty amazing to see that Gino would have enough confidence in all of them to put them on the ice at the same time. So that shows how much uh, confidence in the ability of those young men that Gino Gasparini has. And that senior right there, Tarek Howard, just going in for his third penalty of the game, interference at 17 minutes. So Wisconsin with a chance here, but here's Herkus on his knees firing it in. Anderson having a little trouble with it. Wisconsin down 2 0 with 2.44 remaining in the second period. Granado shoots. Oh, just wide as Belfort was screened by Lemoyne. But back come the Sioux. This is Herkus losing it. Cancel. Runs into Joyce. Now Joyce gets a check in the back from Sean Sable. Somebody's glove goes flying. And we get a whistle there. Now Joyce pushing with Cancel. Herkus in there as well. And Big Sable trying to get into the act. Well, the space offs for one, for, for one thing is going to come outside the zone because Michael Moyne has stepped in there. Looks like the players are still jostling in there. They're trying to get Herkus separated. And now Tansel and uh, he and Kidd taking some shoves. Well, Bob Joyce just playing the puck along the boards. And after the whistle went, the Wisconsin players just kept on going. Whether or not they heard the whistle or not is uh, hard to say because it does get a little noise in here sometimes, as we see. The two player, I believe Tony Herkus, getting towards the penalty box. And I'm sure there'll be a Wisconsin player to follow. And Wisconsin. Also gets a penalty out of this, as you said. Herkus is in. And I didn't quite see the Wisconsin player. 20. Wish they get numbers on the side of their jerseys so you can see what's going on there. That's the one thing I don't like about Wisconsin. No sleeve numbers. It's tough for broadcasters. They're called, what time they're called television numbers? Is that Ranheim? Oh, Ranheim. Anyway, time of the penalties will be 17. 34, and it is Ranheim and Herkus for roughing. So it's four on three here in favor of Wisconsin for the next minute and 26 seconds as Tarek Howard is still in the box. Well, with that rush, Tony Granado used Mike Lemoyne as a screen, and Ed Belfort didn't even react to the puck coming by him. He's, he was pretty much dead to right there, but the shot happened to go wide of the net. So again, uh, UND dodges a bullet. I know it's tough to see through the mask, but you could just see Belfort looking at Mike Lemoyne saying, what happened? Well, that's what a good player will do. Like Tony Granado knows when to use that player to screen and put it right between Mike Lemoyne's legs. And I, and I still don't think Ed Belfort even thought a puck that was already coming off the backboard. Now we're skating four on three. Wisconsin with a man advantage. Here's Chris Tansel up, Boomer. Stopped in front by Ed Belfort and shoveled aside. Lemoyne now. Granado pokes it off his stick. Badgers try to center it. It hits the net. Lemoyne takes a whack at it. Not strong enough, however. And Chris Tansel, number 22, holds it in. Over for Granado. As Ford, he tells Ford, go over there. Now Tansel, back to Granado. 
to Tansel. He shoots. Oh, and that deflects high off the glass. I believe Belfour got the stick on that. Tansel holding it in again. Granado whips it over for Ford, and that play did not click. Off the front of Ford stick. Tansel cranks just wide. Granado went after the rebound. Centering pass by Ford, bounces, and here's Ian Kidd picking it up one-on-one. -on -one. Tansel is back, now a two-on-one with Joyce. Kidd shoots just wide, the rebound poked aside by Anderson. Back come the Badgers, Granado. Trying to get around Kidd, now he waits for some help as Wisconsin was changing some players. Tansel with it now to Granado. Locked in front by Kidd, sent out by Joyce, and here's Howard out of the box. Howard will catch up with the puck, and it will be an offside call. In that case, Tarek Howard has to go back over the center ice line before he goes for the puck, and he did not, so therefore it is an offside, an offside pass and a good play as get some fresh troops out there as Ian Kidd had been out there for a little while. As you look at big Tarek, a senior from Oles, Alberta, another one from Oles, Alberta was Brad Berry, was he not? Was he? <laughs> I think so. From Alberta, from Alberta somewhere. What the heck? I, I didn't think he was from Old. I thought he was from ba Bashaw. I he, Bashaw. Bashaw, that's well, it. Well, it was either that or Chevy, Alberta. <laughs> <laughs> well, Bashaw, Old, I'm sure they're in the same neighborhood. <laughs> Bashaw, Alberta, right. <laughs> Alberta. 54 seconds to go in the second period. 28 seconds to go on the penalties to Herkus and Ranheim. Off the draw comes back to Mendel. A shot blocked by Doob. They tie up for it, and it comes back to Stanton. Sue got Doob and Koborinski up front. Now Benson back in the net, being hampered by Tuttle. Loose puck. Backhand in front and a goal. Glenn Revac. Well, Glenn Revac had a heck of a weekend, scoring three of the Wisconsin five goals they've had this weekend. Uh, again, he. Just good hustle in their end, in the two end of the rink, and it's just a bad time. I'm sure Gino's not really happy with having a goal score on him with 34 seconds after the period. As you see the replay, just good at just being out muscled. Again, Fawson being out muscled, and the puck kicks to Reback. Reback takes Ed Belfour across there. Ed went for the poke check. Oh, and unfortunately, in his part, he missed the puck. A little bit better here. We see Fawson muscled off the puck. The puck kicks out in front. Reback skating across. Ed missing the poke check and trying to flip flop it as he tried to swing his stick around uh Rivek did had all the time in the world to backhand it into the net and i believe it was benson who got burned there not fought we don't <laughs> either way you wouldn't want to have that to your credit that's but right Rivek getting the goal is fourth of the season and third in two nights huddle on the assist now wisconsin again with an opportunity there and that does not develop holding it in his stent sends it wide of the net Belfort trying to fall on it with Tuttle right there. Now Ed covers up with six seconds to go in the period. That goal coming at 19-26, making it 2-1 to one in favor of the Sioux. Well, anytime you score a goal in a close game, it's going to pick you up. It's, uh, when it comes to the end of the period, as Wisconsin just scored, it's going to give you a little bit of drive going to the end of the period. And it, again, UND is a little, little bit uh, shaken right now, as it showed. The players are throwing the puck around. Something they haven't done that much, throwing it away to a Wisconsin player in their own end of the rink. And uh, if they keep that up, you know, Wisconsin's going to you know, gain a lot more momentum in, in the process. Well, it just shows you how the little mistakes can kill you, especially in this game tonight. That's what happened to the Sioux football team today. We'll take a look at those Sioux football highlights at halftime, along with action from the Devil's Lake Bismarck game. A yeah. little free edition of the Roger Thomas show. That's right. <laughs> we'll have Roger on tomorrow night at 10.30. And in case you're tuning in, expecting to see... ABC programming where we'll have Heart of the City and Spencer for Hire immediately following the news tonight. Heart of the City and Spencer for Hire will be seen tonight. But right now, we've got some heated conversation in the face-off circle. Well, the referee's standing right there. Tony Granato tried to decapitate someone in the face-off circle. A stick came up and took a swing at his head as they're putting the suit player off and the Wisconsin player off. Mickey Krumpetich. Krumpetich and Granado. And Granado, but uh, again, there's that, that rule where you just keep that stick down, and Tony just kind of hauled off and tried to decapitate him by the looks of it. 19.54 the time. A high stick and a roughing, I believe. High stick on Granado. And you see here, we see them in the face-off circle jostling. Mickey gets knocked down. He'll get up and he'll put his hand in 
Fernando's face. Now watch the stick come up real high here in about a couple of seconds as soon as the stick comes out. Whap right there. Okay, that's uh, if that isn't intent to injure or something. I don't know what it is, but uh, again, the referee's right there and puts him off base, which he should have done. Well, officially, they call it Granado for roughing and Trumpet to tie sticking. <laughs> I don't know whose stick did he say he came up in that situation. I don't know. <laughs> 1954, the time. We've got just six seconds remaining in the period. Lemoyne off the faceoff, lays it off the glass to Joyce. And there's the horn. That's the end of the second period with the score, North Dakota 2, Wisconsin 1. And that goal, now we've got some more action here in front of the Badgers pitch area. Sable gets into it with one of the stewards. You could see that coming when they started crossing paths to go back to the locker room. And that happens every time. And here's Jeff Gino coming out on the ice to get the players back out here. And here comes Jeff Sauer. But it was Sable who came up and talk, started talking to Ed Belfort as Ed Belfort were just skating off the ice. And uh, a goalie is not someone you want to talk to too much uh, as, as your players will automatically come in and make sure they protect their goaltender. And a smart move there by Gino Gasparini and Jeff Sauer to get this thing cleared up right now. But that happens pretty much every time in any rink when these two teams or any team they start crossing like that. A game is as tight as this. The emotions are running very high and they get out of control quite quickly. As you see Tony Granado talking to the referee, finding out what's going to happen with that situation. But uh, Sable, again, has been uh, one of those guys who's kind of been in trouble all weekend. So it's not unusual to see him being part of that uh, melee. Sable, 6'3", 214 pounds, the designated hitter, I guess we could call him. Well, on the power play, they use in front of him. I'm sure during the course of the game, Ed's probably taking a few chops at him, and he's probably taking a few chops at Ed Belfort. So that's probably what that one precipitated that uh, altercation. Well, it's two to one, and that goal, as we mentioned, is just exactly what the doctor ordered if you're Wisconsin. Well, when you're on the road, especially in the second night after being beaten the night before, you want to keep it close and hope to get a break to uh, hopefully pull the victory out for you. And that's what it is. It's two to one right now. They're, they're not out of this game by any stretch of imagination. I'm sure they'll come out this third period all fired up, knowing that it's a couple of breaks here, a couple of breaks there, and they could end up with a victory here tonight. So, again, it's very important for them to stay in the race if UND wins tonight. They're going to look like uh, with uh, University of Minnesota and University of North Dakota are going to be the ones running away with the league, and there's going to be a lot of also runs very early in the season. Saves in that period for Ed Belfort, 12, two-period total of 23. Wisconsin's Anderson had four, a two-period total of 13. Well, again, a lot of those shots were good quality shots, and Ed Belfort made a lot of excellent saves. Uh, the one that did beat him was one he went for the poke check in that situation. It's a split-second decision to go for it or don't go for it. He did go for it. He missed it. And unfortunately for him, the, uh, the Wisconsin player deposited behind him. But uh, again, you have to have your defense playing tough and not letting Wisconsin get those kind of opportunities, especially when you're winning up two to one. As we said, it wasn't Darren Boston. It was uh, Tom Benson who got muffled off the puck. In that situation, you have to make sure you be tough on the puck on your stick to make sure that puck stays away from the front of the net area. In that case, that's exactly where the puck ended up. And as a result, Wisconsin's on the board, and it is two to one in favor of the Sioux after two periods. We'll be back to take a look at some football action from today. UND and Devil's Lake style right after this. Pickups, pickups, pickups. Hanson Ford Lincoln Mercury has the selection you need of F-150 and Ranger pickups. Solid construction, yet interiors that make the new pickups from Ford a step above the competition. The selection has never been better, and the price is never lower. Every new 86 pickup is closeout price. So hurry and save thousands now at Hanson Ford while the selection is best. Because we've got the car for you. Mm. Mm. Oh, it's cold. Oh, man, nothing for lunch. What are you going to do now? It's simple. Look, Fat Albert's is now open at 7 a.m. Stop by on your way to work and let Fat Albert's brown bag your lunch. It's quick and easy and good. Still out to get you. Fat Albert's brown bag lunch. Welcome back to the Winter Sports Center. After two periods, it is two to one in favor of the Fighting Sioux. Right now, we'll take a look at some of today's football action. The Sioux football team, as you probably know, is going for its third win in a row today at a very chilly Memorial Stadium. But Northern Colorado 
put the big chill on UND. The Sioux lost 36 to 33 thanks to numerous mistakes. Northern Colorado erupted for 14 points in the first four minutes. Kurt Otto is intercepted by Rob Pardo, who takes it 62 yards for a 7 to nothing lead. The Sioux fumbled the kickoff, which led to another TD, but the Sioux come back as Otto tosses nine yards to Willis Jaycox, and the lead is down to 14-7. To Second quarter, UND ties it up. Otto with the bomb, 60 yards to Tracy Martin, and it's 14 all. The Sioux go ahead on field goals of 42 and 30 yards by Pat Beatty, and UND is in the lead, 20 to 14 at the half. In the third quarter, more trouble. Kurt Zeidmulder's punt is blocked. Jed Roberts recovers for a 13-yard touchdown. 21-20, Bears. But the Sioux regain the lead as Otto completes a seven-yard pass to Jay Cox. Willis takes a big hit there, but UND is on top, 26-21. In the fourth, another interception sets up another Bears touchdown. Lauren Snyder, 12 yards to Cedric Tillman, 29-26. It was 36-26 when Darren Kelderman throws a fourth down wobbler. Martin catches it for a 35-yard score, 36-33, six and a half minutes left. UND was at the three in the closing moments, but a penalty moved it to the nine. The Sioux go for the win instead of the tie. Kelderman's pass to Rusty Eckness, incomplete. The Sioux lose by three. Didn't play very well, and uh, it's disappointing because we had been playing well and doing things better as a team, and uh, we just didn't do that today, so it's disappointing. It's the toughest one of the year to take for you so far? It might be because... Uh, there's some bridges I thought we had crossed as a football team in getting better, and we kind of backtracked in some ways today and uh, made the mistakes, you know, turned the ball over, didn't tackle as well as we had, and uh, block kick and uh, for a touchdown and interception for a touchdown and just things that you don't want to do. It wasn't a very good loss because losses are always hard to take, but looking out there, the way we played, you know, I felt everybody on our team pretty much felt that we were the better team out there. And we just did mistakes that killed us. Made a lot of mistakes that killed us. And that's, I guess that's what, you know, I, like Coach Thomas said, it shouldn't have come down to the end there. We should have been up by two or three touchdowns. You know, we should, we should have won. And we didn't. Well, I think we went back to some of our old habits of giving up the, the quick points at the beginning. That, that really hurt us. It's, it looks like uh, when we played back in Missouri, it really hurt. We, we didn't come out ready to play. And it took us uh, 14 points on the board for them before we really got around to playing. I have been to all but two Sioux games this year, and I must say that I have not seen Roger Thomas in a more sour mood than after this one. He was extremely disappointed with the Sioux today, particularly after the way they played the past two weeks. Not the greatest effort for UND, and it was just uh, fortunate for them that they were able to stay in the game when you consider all the turnovers they had. Kurt Otto, incidentally, we said that Darren Kelderman was in there late in the game. Kurt Otto sprained an ankle, but he will be okay. Tony Dorso saw some action today as well as Darren Kilderman. Don't forget, we'll have more highlights tomorrow on the Roger Thomas Show after the late news. The Sioux now 2-5 and five in the NCC, 2-7 and seven overall. Northern Colorado 3-4 and four in the NCC and 3-6 and six overall. Also today, NDSU battered Omaha 25-3, and the Sioux will travel to Nebraska-Omaha next Saturday. Now in high school football today, Devils Lake scored a big victory in the North Dakota Class A quarterfinals, knocking off defending state champion Bismarck 7-6. Bismarck led 6-0 at halftime, but the Satans get the winning drive in the fourth quarter. Craig Demeester to Blaine O'Gorman. Nice jump for the catch, getting it down to the Demons 11. Then Darcy Olson plows through. This moves it down to the one-yard line. And on the next play, it is Olson again, this time for the touchdown. The point after wins it for Devils Lake. The Satans go to 10-0 for the season. They will play Williston next weekend in the semifinals, and a coin flip will determine the site of that game since both teams are seated first in their conferences. Williston beat Shanley today, 28-14, to and tonight, Bismarck St. Mary's is at Fargo South, and the winner of that game plays Fargo North next weekend. Also tonight, Argyle and Halleck going in the Minnesota Section 8 nine-man championship. Dan Kleitz is scheduled to have highlights of that game tonight on our late sports, and Dan will bring you up to date on all the rest of the football scores and all the day's sports events. Our score is 2-1 to one, North Dakota after two periods, and we will be back to the Winter Sports Center in just a moment. Stands you, we're people who care, we're just like you. Professor 
little services and friendly smiles. Full service banking that's right for you. Community National, it's working for you. Community National, back understands you. Community National, people like you. In a high-tech fighter, avionics like these are your eyes. In your car, this eye tells you the all-weather Delco Freedom battery is raring to go. One glance is all the maintenance it takes in any weather, from the blazing desert heat to flash frozen with sub-zero liquid gas. You'll see why Delco is the world's largest producer of maintenance-free batteries. Distributed by Hofford Motor Service Incorporated, Highway 220 North, East Grand Forks. Never wait for trouble. One out of town score, Northern Michigan leading Michigan Tech three to one after two periods. Right here in Grand Forks, it's two to one. North Dakota over Wisconsin with one more period to go. We were talking about football. I should not leave out some of the other area teams today. Cavalier and Finley Sharon won their games, and Laramore lost its game. And as we said, Dan Kleitz will bring you up to date on all the scores tonight on the late sports. And we'll remind you again, if you were hoping to see Heart of the City and Spencer for Hire tonight, those shows will be on tonight on Channel 8 following the late local news. Well, Travis, 2-1, to one, North Dakota after two periods. Let's take a look at that scoring recap in the second period. Scott Dube opens it up at 140. Well, again, just good hustle by Scott Dube as he broke down the... Uh, oh, no, okay, this is the other Scott Dube. Okay, just hustled towards the net, and then Kobrinski made a heck of a pass to him. Dean Anderson made a heck of an attempt to stop it, but just a good backhand over top of his pads into the net as we see the little spin around and to stay on side. Scott Dube breaking towards the net. Little backhand, Wisconsin defense all over him. It's amazing he got the shot away in the first place. Just over top of the Dean Anderson's pads into the net. Just a heck of an effort. Dube had several great chances. That was the one that went into the net. His sixth of the year, Parks and Kobarinski getting the assist, and that made it 1-0 in favor of North Dakota. No scoring until the 15-07 mark. Mickey Krumpenich on a great play here from Herkus. Well, again, Tony Herkus uh, has been kind of the quarterback out here. They see Mickey Krumpenich sneak in the top of your screen. Nobody near him as he has about two or three seconds to stand there. Dean Anderson has to commit himself, and uh, Mickey deposits the, far, deposits the puck in the far end of the net. Uh, you know, why he's standing there by himself and no one was around there. You're in a man's short situation, but you have to make sure you watch behind your back and not let a UND player sneak in there. A different angle on it. Tony Herkus again from the Wayne Gretzky behind the net. He just kind of quarterbacks it sets it up and throws it in front of to Mickey who just takes a good shot. And as is the case with Wayne Gretzky, sometimes the players are so worried about Gretzky and Herkus, they forget about the other guys. Well, that's what happens when you have a Tony Herkus uh, you know, person with a billy like he has out there. They're, they're more worried about what he can do and not the guys coming in behind him. In that case, that's what, that's what burns them. Well, Wisconsin did get on the board late in the period at the uh, with 34 seconds to go. Glenn Revac on a miscue by the Sioux defense. Okay, we'll see Tom Benson here get muscled off the puck. He's the, the Wisconsin player gets between him and the net, knocks him off the puck. The puck comes back out in front. As we see the Wisconsin player coming through, Ed Belfort goes to the poke check, misses it, and Revac just deposits it in behind him as well. It's a good heads up play by the Wisconsin forward to knock Benson off the play, but again, Tom, maybe a little bit uh, lackadaisical as only about a minute left in the period, and when at that point, it should be getting a little bit tougher. Steve Tuttle getting the assist on Revac's fourth goal of the season and third in this series. He got two power play goals last night, and that coming at 1926, and that's where we are right now at two to one. We should talk about the Gophers a little bit today because they beat uh, Denver three to one, but Corey Millen, the big news there, in case you didn't hear, Corey Millen uh, injured an ankle. We don't know how long he's gonna be out, but uh, that is bad news for Minnesota. Well, anytime you lose a person with that ability, it's, uh, he's a big spark plug for them. It's like losing a Tony, if you lost Tony Herkus on UND, it would be a devastating for them as well. So hopefully it won't be a serious injury. They don't think it's broken, but if they think it uh, is injured that bad, it must be some other damage in there somewhere. So he may be out for a little while. We'll have to just wait and find out what the word is from Minneapolis. We've got one more period of hockey to go, and we'll have it for you when we come back. are proud to announce Whirlpool's Diamond Jubilee financing for the holiday season. Purchase any quality Whirlpool appliance and pay no money down. Payments won't begin until February 1987 and pay no interest for six months. Take advantage of Maury's special pricing and Whirlpool's fantastic finance plan now. 
Remember, we offer award-winning service and free local delivery at Maury's in East Grand Forks. You've always come to the River Bend for their distinctive dining, but the River Bend is no longer just a supper club. Take a break for lunch and come find an extensive luncheon menu with everything from crab salad to stir-fry chicken. Relax this Sunday and let us serve you while you enjoy brunch from 10 to 2. A Sunday brunch at the River Bend has a variety that lets you enjoy Eggs Benedict while your companion enjoys prime rib. Whether it be Sunday brunch, a business lunch, or an evening out, the River Bend is the perfect setting. The University of North Dakota is hitting the ice, and Wisconsin will soon follow. And I'm looking at the time. We never did get a shot of this watch on Travis Dunn's left wrist. This Mickey is, Mouse's uh, hand is really quite <laughs> neat, don't you think? No, it's, uh, it's something very special to you. Well, yeah, well, when a team wins the WCHA championship, you are given a watch for winning it, and it's inscribed as the WCHA logo or the North Dakota logo and when you win the when we won the NCAA championship they also put a little writing it says 1980 NCAA WCSA champion University of North Dakota with the fighting Sioux emblem on the watch and it spent two months in New York being repaired the first time in six years it died on me about a month ago so it's full of a believe it or not moved from one part of New York to another, to another part and so it took up about two months for them to fix the darn thing but it is very special as well as uh, all the other memorabilia that we did receive while playing at UND. It's got the Sioux Indian head logo on it. And yep. And the UND football good. team gets that for when, he won the, when they won the NCC championship when I was here. They got real nice watches. Uh, we won the WCHA championship in 1979. Got nice watches for that. And when you're a senior, you also get a nice gold pocket watch. So it's like you retire from uh, <laughs> from work. I got lots of watches. I'm never late for anything. You didn't even have to hang around until you're 65. <laughs> well, we've got a football score. Michigan State leading Minnesota 31 to 10 in the third. That was at the Metrodome tonight. Football, base, everything. We've got the well, good thing. Baseball <laughs> ended up last week because we could have really been messed up. Baseball, uh, with all the rain in New York, it was threatening to postpone it uh, further and further. Maybe we would have had baseball in November for the first time ever, but. It is getting kind of crazy. I wish they would play more day games in the World Series. Well, it's this time of year when you have the hockey starting up, and it's, it seems to be starting earlier every year, and baseball seems to end a little bit later than football, of course, is right in the middle of their season. NFL, CFL in this area, it's uh, in high school sports, basketball starting up for the men pretty soon, I believe it or not, and the girls' basketball and the football and everything else. So I know that the guys at WDAZ are running like uh, chickens with their heads cut off most of the time as they're always trying to cover what's going on in this neighborhood. You're telling me the men's basketball season starts November 11th here at UND, an exhibition against University of Manitoba. Two women open their season November 15th against Brandon University. That's also an exhibition. And again, we have to give credit where credit is due, as a lot of the people who are working here tonight are people who work five days a week at the station. The news shooters, Brad Nygaard, Bob Carey, working real hard. Uh, and all the rest of the technical crew who uh, put in a lot of long hours so we can sit up here for our three hours, do what we do, and then we leave, we go home, they have to tear it all apart. So not to give credit where credit is due. Third period is underway, and North Dakota controlling here. Each team with a man in the box for a minute 47 seconds. Bob Joyce has the puck poked off his stick. Ian Kidd picks it up and sends it to the goal, and it's stopped there by Anderson. Wisconsin trying to clear it. It's held in by Herkus, carrying on Ken McKenzie. Now Pat Ford, number 12, going after it. But Kidd gets there first. Ian Kidd starting out of his own zone. Kidd tried to sidestep McKenzie. He does. Kidd, back of the net, tried to center it. Joyce a shot, and it stopped in front. Out to the point, it's Herkus kicking it on his stick. Tried to get it over to Ian Kidd. And the Wisconsin Badgers clear at the center. Gary Buns backhands it in. Both teams making some changes. Tony Herkus into Badger Ice has Johnson with him, waits for some help now as the Sioux are completing the line change or the defensive change. Herkus now in the clear out to Lemoyne. Flips it in, locked there by Dean Anderson. Badgers go the other way. Russ Parrott gets it off to Mike Lemoyne. 
Back to Parent now with 28 seconds to go on the penalties to Krumpetich and Granado. And that's a nice thing call there. Well, a heck of a move, a move by Ian Kidd as he came down and undressed the Wisconsin defense and went around behind the net and threw it out in front. And Bob Joyce is there, and uh, not sure the shot got through to Dean Anderson or not, but a, a heck of an opportunity early in the period. But in defense, we were talking, not in defense or anything, we were talking a little while ago about the, uh, the WDAZ Halloween party last night. You came as a Minnesota fighting saint. Yeah. And he came with like his teeth blacked out like he'd been beat up and uh, <laughs> a couple of band-aids on, which was Minnesota we, fighting saints happened to them a lot, that, I guess. That was the hockey team in the World Hockey Association, and uh, I'm sure the Winnipeg fans watching will remember the fighting saints. As a matter of fact, uh, as we talked last That's year, an, old, an, old, an ex hockey coach of mine, Jim Scrap Iron Johnson, was a, a member of that hockey team. They're doing some patchwork in front of the Wisconsin goal, and while they attend to that, we'll look at this. Pickups, pickups, pickups. Hanson Ford Lincoln Mercury has the selection you need of F-150 and Ranger pickups. Solid construction, yet interiors that make the new pickups from Ford a step above the competition. The selection has never been better, and the price is never lower. Every new 86 pickup is closeout price. So hurry and save thousands now at Hanson Ford while the selection is best. Because we've got this car for you. see the other games on the slate today Denver and Minnesota is already completed Minnesota defeated Denver three to one now what is this you're saying every time we talk about the Minnesota Fighting Saints they cut us off to also go to a commercial or something so I, we'll, we'll talk about them again I, what about well, the Fighting Saints well I did dress up as a Minnesota Fighting Saints because I had one of their actual original jerseys from the 1972-73 season, yeah. which probably means nothing to most people, but uh, right. to collectors like me, that is worth something. I was the biggest Saints fan. And uh, Travis, though, you came as Ed Grimley yes. to the WDAZ Halloween party. Yes, and Ed Grimley. Yes, and I looked great. You know, smashing with my hair is pointed up in a little point. <laughs> I think we should <laughs> explain for those of us listening who do not know who Ed Grimley is. I know that our boss didn't know who Ed Grimley was. Right. Well, you have to watch uh, Saturday Night Live from years gone by. Another Canadian, Martin, Martin Short, Short, dresses up like him. Rose looked like, who was Rose last night? Rose Liz Taylor. Liz Taylor, yeah, that's it. <laughs> well, there's a lot. The Pink Panther was there. And, that's uh, right. Jerry Doolum. Uh, a lot of Pat Sweeney imitators. <laughs> Somebody got a hold of those masks. <laughs> Terry, uh -huh. Terry, Terry Doolum wore a Bugs Bunny sweatshirt. <laughs> that was his contribution. Back to the action now as UND with a 2-1 to one lead and 18-23 remaining in the third period. 14 seconds to go on the penalties, one to each team. Russ Parent weaving in. Here's Parent going in on goal in front of Johnson. Stopped by Anderson on a beautiful save. Loose puck. Here's Parent again, out to the point. Lemoyne, a shot blocked at the defense. And here come the Badgers as the penalty expires. Lemoyne bumps Ranheim off the play. Now Davidson in there checking as well. Puck behind everybody. Shuchuk puts it right on Lemoyne's stick. Lead pass intended for Johnson, it's too far. Anderson stops it with Krumpetich scheming in. Right to Johnson, a shot, oh, and it hits the defenseman's stick. And goes into the crowd as Mendel got a stick on that. Well, Christmas came here early for Steve Johnson as he was just standing in front of the net and the puck ended up right in his stick. Dean Anderson having a heck of a time moving the puck there. He seems to be losing his balance and falling down, just having a heck of a time and fighting it a little bit. And luckily enough for Dean Anderson, the puck went off of one of his defenseman's legs or sticks and up over top of the glass. Both teams now at full strength with 17 38 remaining. North Dakota 2, Wisconsin 1. behind the net it sparks out to the point Howard a drive stopped by Anderson the rebound and he covers up as Jube got off the backhand and Anderson sprawled to stop it well that's exactly what happens when those rebounds are, are occurring but then again UND are very effective in crashing towards net and causing a lot of traffic in front of Dean Anderson puck comes back to Derek Howard the big shot doesn't stop it just lets it rip and there's all that traffic two or three Sioux players standing there and only one or two Wisconsin players the rebound comes out and Dean Anderson only his acrobatics uh, Stop the puck from going into the net. So the score remains two to one in favor of North Dakota. Kept in at the point by Benson. And apparently it slipped outside the blue line and it is whistled offside. 
but in and this, the whole trend of this period has been uh, you know, a couple of good moves by UND defense, and Russ Perrin stepped in as well and made a heck of a move on and undressed the UN, uh, Wisconsin defense and, and had a very good opportunity to uh, score a goal, only did not put it into the net. But uh, where these guys get these moves, I don't know. These guys seem to be learning a lot from Tony Herkus, I think. <laughs> Must be rubbing off. Now Howard firing it high. Off the glass it comes. Now around for John Bice, number 11. Geisness breaking the Badgers out here. Sagator now has a man in front, and the shot is high and wide. Comes out to the point, and a man is down in the corner. That's Todd Geisness for Wisconsin. He happened away from the play. No one really, I think he just crashed into the boards as he was, he seems to be holding his shoulder. And it looks like Geisness will be all right. He's just shaken up a bit. We're talking about our crew. I don't want to... Once we start naming names, I'm sure we're going to leave somebody yeah. out, but we've got to thank uh, guys like Jake Tracy here on camera who shot the Sioux football game, ran over here. Now he's on camera on the hockey game. Bruce, Sundi right now. Bruce Sundin and Devil's Lake. He ran from Grand Forks to Devil's Lake. Well, he didn't run. He drove out to Devil's Lake today to get those football highlights for us, and now he's on camera tonight. Dennis Clemenson, our chief engineer, heading up the crew, and you'll see their names at the end of this telecast, and we couldn't do it without them. Great to see our old buddy Rolf Honestead, too, and Craig Schmidt from Remote Possibilities. Down to the Wisconsin zone. Here's Koborinski out to the point to Ian Kidd. Over the shot, and it's blocked as Fawzen took the shot, and Tuttle got in front of that. Tuttle banks it off the boards, but it comes to Ian Kidd. 2-1 to one Sioux, 16-34 remaining in the third. Lawson tries to flip it ahead for Kidd. Too far. McKenzie stops it. And it is whistled. The puck's knocked down by a high stick. So the faceoff will come all the way down into the Wisconsin end of the rink again. As we look, look at number 12, Pat Ford from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, a junior. And I'm just wondering if WDAZ goes up. I was talking to Doug Smell's yeah. dad last week, and I think they get Channel 8 in Moose Jaw. So uh, if it's in Moose Jaw, then maybe perhaps... They can get us? I thought we he were... Wasn't, he wasn't positive if they do or not, but I... I think we're off the air now in Saskatchewan. So much he watches TV, <laughs> but he lived there, and he said he wasn't sure if he did or He they, thought he did. They can watch Channel 8, but they won't see this game. <laughs> well, we used to be on cable up there. But we hope you're enjoying the game wherever you are tonight. Well, we're on in Carmen, Manitoba. That's anyway. right. Now Krumpenich banging in there with Perry Nakaneshny, Mandel in between, number 17. Krumpenich trying to get a stick down on it. Into the corner it goes, Stanton with it. Squeezes it out to center, and here's Ranheim for the Badgers. Ranheim leaving it for Granato, a flip shot high. Blocked, the rebound in front, and the Sioux will clear it away. Darren Fawcett leading a three on two. Cohen pumps it in. Kid going after it with Rob Mendel. Kid tied up on the play. Granado can't clear it. Here's Nakaneshti. Has Krumpenich over on the right. Loose puck in front. Krumpenich, a shot hit the post on the feed from Bowen. Krumpenich again centers and pass, and it's blocked by Granado. He goes down. Nakaneshti throws it around over here. Aaron Fawzen trying to stop it. He keeps it in. Now it's flipped out to center. Gary Shuchuk, number 26 with it. Intercepted by UND. And here comes Trumpetich. He throws it in, and Mendel goes back for the Badgers as each team changes players. Ricky flips it behind him for Davidson. He's being wrapped up by Mendel. No penalty call. Oh, now the net is off the magnets. Davidson was getting into some high-sticking action there with Rob Mendel. And one of the uh, John Bice, one of the Wisconsin defensemen, was pushed into his goaltender. The goaltender went to the net and knocked it off. And with the uh, new magnetic post, the net comes off very easily. And the whistle is blown as soon as the net does get moved. So, but uh, again, a couple of great opportunities in front of the Wisconsin net. Unfortunately, unable to get their sticks on the good wood. Jeff Bowen, unfortunately, did not. Uh, I think maybe in that case, he should have held on to it a little bit longer. He made the goalie commit himself and slid it across. Instead, passed the puck maybe perhaps a little bit too soon. It's hard to say. Uh, it's so easy sitting up here being an expert. <laughs> That's right. That I are. 15.03 to go in the third period. Off the draw. Parrott fakes. Tees it up. Over for Lemoyne. A drive just wide. 
Heron trying to catch up with it, but the Wisconsin player Gravelin gets there first. Almost intercepted by Bricky. The Badgers bring it across. Hansel is stood up by Lemoyne. UND gets the puck now. Scott Bricky going back for it. Now Parrott carries on. Held in by Sable. A shot blocked there by Ed Belfour. Centering pass intercepted by Davidson. Off the glass. It's outside the line as Sable couldn't control it. Gravelin losing it. Now we've got some muscling between Sable and Bricky. That breaks up. Meantime, Mike Lemoyne retrieves for the two. Guys just tying him up in the corner. Bricky throwing his muscle around. It's thrown outside the line and catching up is Brent Bobbick. Look out, Gary Buns getting the stick up in his face. Lead pass. It's going to be offside as Geisness was in too far. 14 minutes and four seconds to go in period three. As you look at Ed Bell for again being very steady in the net, coming out making some good saves. We look at Mike Lemoyne going to the bench. Uh, some pretty physical action down there. But we, as we talked before about the young team that UND does have, what they do when they do make a mistake, if anybody does make a mistake, they're they have they just have so much energy and so much gumption. They just get back up and get back into the play, and they cover up for each other very, very well and play very well as a team. Now a loose puck. Oh, Herkus fell down. Otherwise, he would have had a clean break. And the fans screaming for a penalty here. Well, I think believe the fans are a little bit mad because Dean Anderson didn't really have control of the puck, but he did put his glove on top of it. And as soon as the referee loses sight of that puck, the whistle goes. And some idiot, and that's just what he is—an idiot through a cup of something out onto the ice, and they have to clean that up. And people just don't realize how dangerous that actually is if it's got a person skating full blast. Or Okay, here we come back into the replay. We see Tony Herkes fall down. We see Dean Anderson come up, put his glove on it. The whistle goes as soon as he covers it, but it actually wasn't covered, but the referee was behind him. So as soon as he loses sight of that puck, the whistle automatically is blown. Quick whistle there. Joyce fans off the draw. There's Benson taking a swipe at it. It falls down. Herkes keeps it in. Howard moving in. Howard, a shot stopped in front by McKenzie. Loose puck. And Pat Ford, number 12, clears for the Badgers. Now Herkus goes down again, and the fans continue to cheer. Bob Joyce muscling in the corner with Pat Ford. Johnson joining in the scuffle. Ford trying to get it out of there. And Johnson keeps it. Back of the Wisconsin goal. Gary Buns takes over for the Badgers. Tried to send it out. There's a big collision. Meantime, Tuttle all alone for Wisconsin. Tuttle, backhand, stop, goal by Belfort. Well, what can you say about Ed Bell for a heck of a save? As you see, there's a heck of a quiz at the blue line. All the UND players get knocked down. Tuttle's all by himself from center ice on in. Ed Bell for makes Tuttle make the first move and sticks the big pad down on the ice, making the save. And uh, what can you say? That's just great one-on-one -on -one hockey and a heck of a save by uh, Ed Bell for As it stands here, just people are going to give him a standing ovation, something he's very well deserved. Everyone on their feet here. To cheer Ed Belfort for that tremendous save. It was like looking at bowling, and all those players went spilling, and that's what sprung Steve Tuttle. Well, UND a little bit guilty of everybody playing the puck and not watching the men coming from behind, and Steve Tuttle had the breakaway pretty much right from the blue line all the way in, but Ed, did, Ed Belfort did play it very well, stood his ground, and made Tuttle make the first move. And with that big pad leg, we've seen that big pad put down three or four times to get it right down the ice, and the only place Tuttle could put it would be upstairs. And with the speed he had, he just couldn't stop and, and deposit it up the top. 13 minutes and 7 seconds remaining in the third period. North Dakota 2, Wisconsin 1. Dube and Krumpetich have the North Dakota goals. Revac has the goal for Wisconsin. UND going for its eighth straight win. And that's the difference between this year's team and last year's team. Last year they were getting out shooting teams, but the other teams were getting weak goals. And this year they're not getting the weak goals scored against them. And when the opportunity for a big save comes the goalies are there standing uh, strong behind their players and in that case it uh, was a great opportunity for Wisconsin that was stopped by Ed Belfort. They finally dropped the puck loose under Foss and stick taken away by shoot to kick at the shot off oh Granato a shot just wide. Now Ranheim tries to get it out to the point kid breaks it up and here comes Ian Kidd leading the rush three on one here come the Sioux kid centers bouncing puck cleared aside broken up by the defenseman Stanton. Now Stanton has the puck for the Badgers. Throws it back of the net. Mendel will have to catch up with it. 
The pace is really picking up here in this third period. Now Ian Kidd goes back for North Dakota. Ranheim chasing him. Here's Fawson. Now Koborinski takes it away. Koborinski has Parks on the right wing. Dribbles back of the goal. Mandel around the board. Fawson will hold it in. Or will he? No. He brought it back outside the line. And Ian Kidd regroups. Deflected pass. Stanton coming in. It would have been offside anyway. So the Sioux will bring it out. Wisconsin in the line change, and it's hard off the stick of Fawson. And UND will send out some fresh troops. 12 minutes to go. 2-1. North Dakota. Third period. Tom Stegasaur, number 19. Bowen. All over his back. Russ Perrin trying to get away from Paul Gravelin. Gravelin causing his share of trouble in there. Now Nakaneshny in there. Perrin still can't clear it out. Sent back of the goal. Lemoyne whacks it out. And it takes a hop over Bice's stick. And a big race for it here as Bowen dives to take a swipe at it. And Sean Sable takes it over. Nakaneshny knocks Sagasaur off the puck. Bouncing puck. Gravelin trying to knock it down. Here's John Bice, number 11. Hits a teammate in the skate. Carrying on Sagasaur. Gets around Lemoyne, but it's whistled offside. 11.09 to go, and we'll be back. We've come a long way together here in Dakota. We've prospered and grown. First National Bank has been helping business dreams come true for more than 50 years. We've loaned more money to more businesses than any other bank around. We work hard to make your success our business. And we've become this area's business finance leader doing just that. Partnership, commitment, banking Dakota style. First National Bank in Grand Forks. Gino Gasparini and his team enjoying a two to one lead, but it's anything but comfortable with 11 minutes and nine seconds to go in the third period. Wisconsin clears it down to the UND zone. Ed Belfour watches it go by. Tarek Howard picking it up for the Sioux. To Scott Ricky, out to center, poke back in, and that's offside as Ford could not get back onside. And it's more a line from uh, Howie Meeker, who is the suppose a famous hockey individual. These guys play with so much gosh darn enthusiasm, and that's true. <laughs> UND plays with a lot of enthusiasm, even though they're young. The mistakes they do make, their enthusiasm makes up for it, and it seems to be catchy because the whole team is playing that way from the seniors on down. There's Glenn Reback. He's got the only Wisconsin goal tonight. Brent Bobick and Gary Buns go muscling after the puck. Now Benson shoots it in. And it is whistled offside, and they're bringing it back to the UND zone. And I have not had the opportunity to see Lee Davidson play much over the course of the season as last night he was out. But uh, for a man who's only 158 pounds, he plays a lot bigger than what he is. He just sticks his nose in there and goes for it. He doesn't back down from anybody. And, uh, you know, a pretty tough little character. I was standing and watching you interview him yesterday. He comes up to about your navel, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Does he shave? He probably doesn't, won't shave. He must be about 14 years old or something. <laughs> it seems they get he, younger every looks, year. Yes, isn't that the truth? 10.39 remaining. Third period. Darren Fawson, the freshman defenseman, gets away from Revac, tries to get it ahead to Bobick. Now it goes back into Fawson's area. Bobick takes a shove from Pat Ford. Tuttle holds it in. Glenn Revac banging in there with Kidd. Now Tuttle takes a hit from Davidson. Davidson not afraid to go into those corners. Backhands it out. McKenzie will catch it. Still a battle along the boards. Now Revac gets the loose puck. In front, look out, and it's cleared by Davidson. Anderson stops it and springs it ahead for Ken McKenzie. To Ford now. Pat Ford around Ian Kidd. No call there, and the official was right there, but even though Ford went down, referee Derek Martin says that's not a penalty. And talking to people who have in re, in, who recruited Lee Davidson, they say that he is a 
very, very similar to Mark Taylor, who is UND's all-time leading scorer and a player I played with. And those are a couple of pretty large pair of skates to fill, as Mark was a heck of a smooth hockey player, Lee. Uh, that, but that's one advantage coming to, <coughs> coming to college that would, that would give Lee is the fact that he gets four years to mature, grow a little bit, put on a little bit of weight, and uh, you know that's obviously a lot better than playing one or two years of uh, Western Canada Hockey League or in, in junior in Canada. 9.41 to go in the game. And the Badgers have to go back. This will be icing. No, they wave it off. Stanton off the boards, outside the line. Lemoyne has it for the Sioux. Over here catching up is Tony Herkus to Bob Joyce. Joyce skating in a shot. Oh, blocked there with the blocker pad by Anderson. Joyce again with it. Tied up. Rob Mendel, now Ranheim sweeps in to pick it up. Takes a hit from Steve Johnson. Tony Granato in to get it for the Badgers. Avoids a check and Ranheim banks it off the boards. Too far for Shuchuk, who is waiting for the breakout. Parent and Shuchuk go after it. Parent goes down. Here's Herkus, has it stolen away, Wisconsin. Granado turns and shoots, and Belfort sticks that aside. Shuchuk again, Granado, it's hard off his stick. Penalty, or no, a whistle here, playing the puck with the hand. I believe it was Wisconsin, so if it was Wisconsin, I'll come outside the line, but it must have been UND because they're keeping it inside. Eight minutes and 42 seconds remaining in the third period. And what you'll see now is Wisconsin will start taking a few more chances as they have been in the last little while. Uh, eight minutes after the game, they're down by a goal. They've got to score that equalizer or possibly the go-ahead goal as well. So they've got to uh, take a few more chances. You'll see the defense and crash in a little bit more. And at this chance, you might even see UND get a few more offensive op opportunities because of it. Off the draw, it's Tarek Howard, number 16. The Koborinsky. Loose puck picked up by the Badgers, and the shot is blocked by Howard. The rebound blocked by Howard as Gravelin got the shot away. Tarek Howard with two blocks in a row. Now Mel Park springs it ahead. Scott Dube kicking it ahead. Here's one-on-one. -on -one. Dube going in, backhand kick out. And the rebound is to Howard. Sue didn't have anyone really in a good position for the rebound, but a good kick out by Dean Anderson. Scott Dube having some fine chances in this game. Held in at the line by Sable. Hits the back of the net, and Benson has it for the Sioux. Goes through Koberinski and goes through Parks, and Sable is back to retrieve for the Badgers. Now Paul Gravelin to Tansel. Dancing in as Tansel has a man in front, and the pass is blocked. Todd Geisens all alone in front there. This will be offside, and it is. And you'll see Gino start going to one or two lines now instead of going through all four like he did the first two periods of the game. He's probably end up going with the Herkus line and perhaps the Koborinsky line a little bit more now that the game's uh, kind of coming to an end with eight minutes left in the game. The guys have carried the load for the most of the weekend. Well, they've got Perry Nakaneshny, Jeff Bowen, <laughs> and Mickey Krumpenich out there. Make a liar out of me, huh? Jeez, I hate That's that. <laughs> <laughs> but that is an all-senior line. Okay, the guys who have the experience. Okay, there you go. <laughs> I knew that. One. I was working with some line there. I knew something. I was left out. the door open for him. Seven and a half minutes remaining. Two to one, North Dakota. Nakaneshny slithers with the head. Here's Krumpenich trying to catch up with it. Bouncing puck. Nakaneshny bats it down, but Ford picks it up for the Badgers. Here they come, three on two. Pat Ford with Puddle and Reback. Ford back to Reback. Backhand just wide. McKinsey can't get it. Nakaneshny takes an elbow to the head from Ford. No call there. Krepinich in on goal. A shot and a goal! Well, that's what we were talking about. Wisconsin defense having to take a few more chances and crashing in towards the puck. Puck was tipped down the ice and very similar to the style of Doug Schmiel had. You'll see Mickey Krepinich just break down the wing. A little pass off the boards by Perry Nakaneshny. There we have... And there we have a Doug Smell look like in my mind wore number eight when he was here at UND and picked the far corner on Dean Anderson. A heck of a shot by Mickey Krumpetich, and Mickey has played one heck of a series this weekend using the wheels to his advantage. They're coming down again. He has the advantage of having his stick on the inside, being a left-hander, and deposits the puck in the far corner of the net. Not much Dean Anderson could do, but uh, again, it's very, very similar to the style of Doug Smell using those wheels and making it work to his advantage. 
Vicky Krumpenich, his second goal of the game, sixth of the season from Nakaneshni and Fossen at 12.53, and it's 3-1 North Dakota. A big goal for the two at this stage of the game. Now Davidson for UND throwing it in. Brent Bobick in to get it. Has Scott Bricky in front. Bobick centering pass out to the blue line. Lemoyne tries to keep it in. Davidson picking it up away from Tuttle, and Davidson fires from long range. Love saved by Anderson. Now Tuttle for Wisconsin with 6.30 to go in the game. Glenn Revac dumping it in for the Badgers. And they will change lines here. Parent wrapped up by Ford. Shuchuk in to help out. Shuchuk and Davidson. And now Parent gives a shove to Pat Ford. On this situation, Pat Ford doesn't want to hang around there. He wants to get out. It just play his team will not benefit his team from staying in the penalty box. But as we talked about earlier, when you're down two to one with uh, time running out in the period, in, in the case of, in this case, the game, Wisconsin defense has to take a few more a few more chances, and in that case, they, they got burnt by it. And uh, Mickey Krapitich, a man who was destined not to make this hockey team if he didn't work real hard this summer, he lost 18 pounds, knocking his frame down from 200 pounds to 182, and uh, Gino gave him the assistant coachship this year, or assistant coach, assistant <laughs> captain, assistant coach. That'll yeah, be right. news to this, this John year. Marks <laughs> yeah, Gene Blaze. Don't tell those guys yet. Sure he Assistant captainship <laughs> because he respected how much, how hard he had worked, and he has been a definite leader this weekend, especially. He's played extremely well. And a great play by McAneshney, taking the hit and still getting that pass off. In some cases, you have to do that. You have to sacrifice your body for the play, and that's what Perry did. Now we're down to six minutes in regulation play. Ranheim for Wisconsin, barreled into by Benson. Now Granado tried to get it to the man at the point, and it's intercepted by Bob Joyce to Johnson. Tried to get it back to Joyce, and Weiss got a stick on it at the last second. Intercepted by Herkus. Tied up by Granado. Into the corner it goes. Sable trying to spin away from Johnson. Can't do it. Now Ranheim in a chase for it. Howard gets there first. Couple of runaway freights there. Now the Badgers come out. Perkis pokes it behind for Tarek Howard. Wisconsin changing some players here. Here's Tom Sagasor, number 19. Deflected wide Howard off the glass into the. No, it did not go into the crowd. Stayed in bounds. And UND. Uses it to change lines, and they call it icing. Five minutes to go. We'll take a break. It's harvest time at Valley Honda with 1986 Honda ATV carryover models specially priced while they last. Choose from three- and four-wheelers like Big Red, Honda 4-Trax, and more. All built for a good time, anytime. As with any motorized vehicle, safety plays a big part in the total enjoyment. Honda ATVs have many built-in safety features. Visit Valley Honda today and ask about the fall lineup of Honda ATVs and save while the harvest specials are hot. North Dakota 3, Wisconsin 1 with five minutes to go in the game. Darren Fawson, number two, the freshman from Bemidji. Leading the Sioux out of their own zone. Fans on the bats. Now he shoots it in himself. Collision behind the net. Dube goes down. Loose puck in front here. Still picking it up. Dube a shot. Kicked aside by Anderson. Dube again with the rebound. Boy, Scott Dube is all over tonight. Parks and Gravelin collide. Kobarinski after the loose puck with McKenzie. Now Sagasur losing it to Dube. Backhand kick out the rebound. Parks. Oh, and it's deflected wide. The Wisconsin defender poked it away. Parks catching up with it back of the net. Has Kobarinski in front of the goal! Well, there's some time for celebration now. I think a lot of questions have been answered by Gino Gasparini's crew tonight. Can they, can they rise to the occasion and play well under pressure? And they sure have. Again, just good heads up play. The, the bump game has been very effective as they've knocked the Wisconsin players all over the ice tonight. As we see, the replay is, well, there's the referee. Pass just in front of the net, and Kobrinski standing very, very shallow. 
Uh, whether or not Dean Anderson even saw him stand there, I don't know. He seems to be very shallow in his net. He's not challenging too much. But again, the shot caught the far corner of the net. So again, I'm sure uh, there's been a lot of questions answered tonight. It's the fans in the stands had to be wondering whether or not this young UND hockey team could rise to the occasion under a lot of pressure. And they sure have showed this weekend that they can play with the best of them. And hey, if they win this one tonight, which it looks pretty positive they will, that's eight games in a row and one game away from tying the all-time record for the passage re fastest start ever by a UND hockey team. Oberitsky is fifth of the season. Parks and Fossen the assist. 15-48 the time. Four to one the score. And whether or not this team will rank up there with one of the best of all time in UND history, it's hard to say. It's a long way to go in the season, but uh, if you get off to a start like this, you can bury a lot of people very quickly. And even if you do hit your midseason slump or a slump or whatever time this season you happen to hit one, if you're so far ahead, you're not going to be hurt by it too much. If UND holds on to the win, they will be alone in first place tonight. Intercepted by Ford, backhand and a goal! Pat Ford! And it's not over yet. Well, if you give Pat Ford an opportunity like that, he's going to burn you on the situation. It seemed that uh, I wasn't watching the play as I was kind of catching the breath myself here, but someone threw the puck right onto his stick as he walked in the middle of the rink. Just a lazy kind of pass across the middle. I mean, it was Mike Lemoyne, and there's Pat Ford standing right there. When you're that far in your own zone, you don't want to be backing up. You want to be positive. You want to get the puck out of your zone. Mike Lemoyne's awful shallow, and Pat Ford is just taking a chance and gambling a little bit at this point of the game. When you're down 4-1, to one, you have to. Michael Moyne put it right in his stick again in defense of Michael Moyne. Sometimes things just happen very fast, and I'm sure as soon as he saw what he did, he wanted to kind of crawl away and hide. Ford, his third goal of the season. Now Ford taking a swing at Lee Davidson, and Davidson skates away smartly, hoping to draw a penalty. Kid going in to have a few words. Well, the officials get between Kid and Pat Ford. Ford will go to the box. Well, an excellent play by Lee Davidson not getting sucked into taking this retaliation penalty. And whatever he did to draw that penalty and to see Pat Ford, he's gone, I believe. Uh, won't speculate in what he did, but it looks like it's a 10-minute misconduct along with it. So Pat Ford, after scoring an unassisted goal at 16.02, leaves the ice at 16.12. posting four minutes on the board, so with 3.48 to go in the game. They're sending Ford to the locker room, and Jeff Sauer shaking his head because now any hopes of a comeback for Wisconsin are not going to be improved by playing a man short. Well, no matter what anybody does at this point in the game, you pretty much have to take it and walk away from it. Unfortunately for the University of Wisconsin hockey team, Pat Ford was, was unable to ignore that little shot. Whatever happened, we did not see it. To get the kind of feel story for Ed Belfort, he plays so extremely well through the course of the game. The team is winning, but he does not deserve to have the two goals against him that he has. He's played extremely well. Well, Ford did get a 10-minute misconduct. He also got two for roughing and two for high sticking. So Ford is done for the night. Ian Kidd passes to no one. Now Krumpetich picks it up. Throws it over here for Herkus. The Sioux on a power play for the remainder of regulation. Here's Tony Herkus leading a three on two break. Herkus trying to split the defense. Can't do it. Held in. Not quite by Joyce. 4-2, North Dakota leading Wisconsin. As Steve Johnson goes in for it. Johnson on a Grand Fork Central. To Mickey Krupinich. Out to Ian Kidd. Kidd with a goal and three assists last night. He shoots, he scores! Well, talk about a rifle of a shot. All Ian Kidd did was get towards the middle of the rink, and that's a set play where the defenseman creeps towards the middle. Wisconsin players let him go, let him wind up the big shot. A few players standing in front of uh, the Wisconsin goaltender, I don't believe he even saw it, or if he did, it was he couldn't react fast enough. That puck was in and out before he could even react. But there you see Ian Kidd go towards the middle of the rink. If no one goes towards him and force him to move the puck, he'll wind up and try and get someone to tip the puck. 
or hopefully in that case let it go right in and that was just a heck of a howitzer as the back of the head bulge about a foot back it seemed and puck was out to the blue line before anybody could shake their head Ian Kidd on the power play his fifth of the season Krumpenich and Joyce on the assist at 16.59 that should wrap it up although that wipes out one minor penalty and now the Sioux will be on a man advantage for the next two minutes now Kobarinski moving in to take the draw with Ranheim and the Badgers throw it into the UND zone Ed Belfour stops it for Russ Perrin Kobarinski, Davidson and Parks up front Davidson tossing it in Parks after it with Sable. Now Kobarinski. Bouncing puck picked up by Ranheim. Here's Ian Kidd. Throwing it over for Perrin. Two on the power play here. Perrin fakes over to Parks. A shot deflected off to the side. Kobarinski now. To Parks. Kobarinski. Perrin. Kidd. Perrin. Tried to fire it over to Kobarinski, and now Bice goes in to try to tie it up. Kobarinski and Granado battling for it now. Parks joining in as well. Loose puck thrown out by John Bice. Kid knocks it down for the suit. Two minutes to go in the game. 57 seconds to go on the Wisconsin penalty. Here's Herkus dishing off. Intended for Davidson, but it is whistled offside. I feel like him in the Montreal Forum with the new that they got going right now. Or the Quebec Coliseum, as they call it. It's a very popular song whenever those two teams get together or any team winning a game, they usually start singing that. Look at Ian Kidd, the sophomore from Gresham. He's been a heck of a leader for this team thus far this year. And one thing that you have to notice is the fact that that line of Bob Joyce, Steve Johnson, and Mickey and Tony Herkus have not been on the ice a lot for the last period and a half. And Geno's relying a lot of, on a lot of his other horses to carry the load. And uh, they've done a very effective job. And it's uh, these youngsters are growing up very quickly as their record is showing. The, they say losing builds character. That's a bunch of malarkey as far as you know is concerned. And winning builds it faster. And they got those guys must have a heck of a lot of it right now. UND in the lead, five to two, with 1:40 to go in the third period. Here's Steve Johnson. Back of the net, Tony Herkus, leader of the Flying Circus. Here's Kidd, a shot stopped by Anderson. The rebound, Choice takes a swipe at it, and it won't go. Well, Pat Ford cost him dearly by taking that penalty, those two penalties this uh, late in the game. There was a little bit of a comeback when he when he potted the goal to make it four to two. But uh, when you're on when you're killing a penalty for the last four minutes of the game, when you're down four to two, there's not much opportunity to get many much offense mounted. As the players in the Wisconsin bench are kind of hanging their head, and I'm sure Jeff Sowers will be kind of happy to get the heck out of town and hopefully work on something for next weekend. With the loss, Sowers' record at Grand Forks will go to one six and one. As Herkus tries a tight angle shot, it's gloved by Anderson, and they blow the whistle. Well, Tony Herkus has sure added another dimension to this hockey team as he uh, stands behind the net there instead of working from the point as they usually do. He works behind the net, pulling the old Wayne Gretzky, Mary Aldemieu type, where he stands behind the net and just kind of tries to get the Wisconsin players to focus on him and have the players, his teammates, sneak in front of the net. In that case, uh, Dean Anderson made the save when he tried to sneak out back out in front again. But uh, he's had a heck of a weekend, and so has the rest of his teammates. Anytime you sweep Wisconsin, it's, uh, it's a heck of an effort. UND will go to 8-0 after tonight and be alone in first place in the WCHA with 16 points. Minnesota won today, so the Gophers will stay in second at 14 points. And next weekend, they head to Michigan Tech up in Houghton, Michigan, as we say it, and that's uh, a tough place to play up, up in Houghton, Michigan. It's the, the northern peninsula of, of Michigan. It's a very quiet kind of a town but it's a tough place to go into play because the rink there is a, is a different but different type of facility it's a good, nice big rink but the fans are also very similar style as here they sit right on top of you and it's very intimidating if uh, you've never been playing in a situation where fans are kind of hanging right over top of you back to the action now Joyce out to Parrott a drive wide rebound in front here's Joyce a shot blocked at the defense Parrott trying to keep it in and it's knocked outside Steve Tuttle now for the Badgers Battling with Lemoyne. Wisconsin now at full strength. We've got 55 seconds to go in this hockey game. 
North Dakota five, Wisconsin two. Bob Joyce along the boards. Joyce cutting to the net, a shot and a goal! Well, when it rains, it pours. In this case, uh, Bob Joyce allowed the free wheel a little bit, not playing the body on him. He's going to beat you alive all night. He's got that good quick release, something he's worked on him a great deal over the last couple of seasons. You see him wheeling and dealing in there. No one really grabs a hold, gets a hold of him or knocks him down. And if he's allowed to walk in like that, there's a good quick wrist shot. Dean Anderson comes out, cuts the angle down. When he was shot like that, there's no way you can stop it. Again, as we see Bob Joyce gathering up his wind as he goes along. He just outmuscles the Wisconsin player for the puck. Breaks out, cuts back out towards the middle of the net. Makes a good wrist shot into the, into the shorthand side on Dean Anderson, just under his glove. And an almost impossible stop to, to make, and Dean Anderson was unable to make it. Bob Joyce. That was his lucky 13th goal of the season. At 19-16, we've got 44 seconds to go. Tony Herkus will get one assist and Steve Johnson the other. And it's six to two, North Dakota. Paul Stanton for the Badgers off the stick of Tony Scheid. And it's just a matter of time now, 28 seconds to be precise. Mal Parks for North Dakota, shooting it in. Dean Anderson behind the net. Scott Dew bumps into his man in the corner. Koborinski, a four-player tie-up. Gravelin and Stanton in there. And, of course, at this stage of the game, you hate to see this happen. A little bumping there, but that breaks up quickly. But again, uh, UND, full credit for the victory this weekend. They've worked extremely hard. And it does answer a few questions. I'm sure Gino wanted to know if they could win a close one under a lot of pressure. And I know talking to people before this weekend, they thought Wisconsin would come in here and give them a little bit more of a hard time than they have. Uh, they did for the first two periods tonight, but unfortunately with a few silly penalties near the end of the game here, it's kind of be turned into a walk, a walk away. But uh, again, a very good series played by the University of Minnesota sort of fighting two hockey teams. Loose puck in front, cleared aside by Anderson. 10 seconds to go now. Darren Fawson at center. The crowd will count it down for you. That's the end of the game. And the University of North Dakota has defeated the Wisconsin Badgers 6-2. Ed Belfour goes to 4-0 for the season. And the Sioux go to 8-0. Well, that's not bad when both your goaltenders are undefeated. <laughs> and that brings his goals, goals against average down below three. And anytime you have that kind of a goals against average, it's pretty outstanding, especially in the in WCHA play. Well, who's going to stop this runaway freight train? Well, I tell you, Michigan Tech is a tough place to go into, and Michigan Tech has uh, been playing better hockey of late. So next week, again, you know, it's uh, one of those nail biters, as I'm sure. Uh, Gino's going to try and get it prepared, but when they're on a roll like this, you get on top of that wave, it's like surfing. When you get up there, you don't want to get off, and I'm sure that, uh, you know, when you're, the confidence this team is building for themselves is uh, unreal, but when you, again, when you play on the road, it's tough in this league, and it's going to be interesting to see if they can answer to the call again. Let's face it, they're not going to win every game this year, but uh, who knows when they're going to be stopped. I wouldn't want to predict it, that's for sure. I'm not going to even come close to predicting. Who knows indeed? The saves in that period. Wisconsin goalie Dean Anderson at 14 for a three period total of 27 and Belfour only four saves in the period for a total of 27 as well so the saves evened out but in that third period UND kind of turned it around and put the heat to Dean Anderson well Ed Belfour was asked to make a couple of to make a couple of big saves in the second period and he was able to he stopped the breakaway in the third period which could have swung the tide toward Wisconsin but he was able to stand up and that builds up a lot of confidence for your team when you know your goaltender is going to be back there making a lot of tremendous saves uh, you know it gives you a lot of confidence knowing that those guys are back there doing the job that you hope they can do and uh, you know when that carries over is you know from goaltender right out when you get that positive attitude it's pretty hard to stop them like we said the wave is is kind of starting they're on top of it right now and there's no way that they want to get knocked off it the three stars tonight number three is Scott Dube with a goal tonight the number two star, Mickey Krupinich, with two goals and one assist. And the number one star, Ed Belfour, who notched the victory in goal with 27 saves. So the final score, North Dakota 6, Wisconsin 2. And we'll be back to wrap it up in just one moment. is 
people have good times, people sharing fun, grand forks is people meeting, people playing, people getting great things done. I can get things here, I can't get it home. You can't beat it. We've got great things going in Grand Forks. Grand Forks is doing, moving, growing all for you. We've got great things going in Grand Forks. The Hallmark Company in Red Lake Falls announces a first time ever factory direct mobile home sale. Three days only, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. These quality Detroiter, Revere, and American mobile homes have been built at the Hallmark Factory for over 25 years. If you've been waiting, now's the time to take advantage of the low interest rates and huge factory direct savings on your new home. Many single and double wide models to choose from at the factory in Red Lake Falls. It'll be worth the trip. North Dakota sweeping the Wisconsin Badgers tonight by a score of 6-2, to two, last night by a score of 9-4. to four. Wisconsin played a lot better tonight, but still I'm a little surprised by the Badgers after beating uh, Minnesota last week. Well, you know, it's hard to say what happened, but I guess when you get, like you said, the Herkus Circus comes in here, it's, uh, it's pretty tough to stop that cre those. And it, it, it was talked about before the weekend that it was a Tony Granato line kind of against the Herkus line. In this case, the Herkus line won out. But it was the overall balance that UND showed this week, and all four lines played well. All seven defense that they had played well. You know, what else can you say? And maybe we talked a little bit about it. The play that really made this finish what it was was Lee Davidson skating away from Pat Ford at the end there and making Ford go in the box, and the Sioux wound up getting a uh, goal out of that one. Well, a critical mistake when you're playing as close as they were playing at that time. They're trying to make a comeback to take four-minute penalty is uh, is a no-no in, in any league we play in. Uh, Lee Davidson did a great thing. He, he walked away from it. He did it for the team. He took the punch. He just walked away from it. That's hard to do, but that shows a great uh, lot of a lot of self-control on Lee Davidson's part. But you got to look back to, back to Ed Belfour making that great save on that breakaway by Tuttle. Uh, if he would have scored then, it could have swung the other way, but instead it swung towards UND's favor. Can you recall a team starting off this well? Well, we never did. We went in the, in the first year, Gino coached here. We started off 2-0, oh, went to Duluth, and got swept by Duluth. And they were in, like, last place in the league that year. Uh, like Gino said last night, they worked real hard in the preseason, aiming to get off to a good quick start. You hope you can get off to a quick start. In this case, it's miraculous. I don't, I don't think Gino had any dreams of coming starting this quickly. You know, it always seems one team does this at the start of the year and, and, and usually hangs on. Not all the time, but usually stays up there in the top spot. I know Minnesota's done it and Duluth has done it and it, it really you can't beat a good start. Well I tell you like right now Minnesota and UND are away by far away from everyone else. They're six seven points or eight points ahead of everyone else. If they can keep up this pace they're going to bury everyone very quickly and if that happens everyone else is going to be chasing them and they'll be sitting back the rest of the season kind of waiting for the playoff to start. Okay coach you know that <laughs> we, we talked about uh, UND always striving for improvement. What do you think they have to improve on after tonight? Well, consistency is something Gino always talks about. Playing consistent, period in, period out, shift in, shift out. Uh, they're getting strong goaltending. There's a few things we, you know, that happened through the course of the game that uh, Gino will want to work on. I'm sure he's got guys up, his coaches up in the stands watching. Uh, consistency is the biggest thing to make the plays. Uh, I think a problem that UND seems to be getting into at times is the fact they're trying to, trying to be a little bit too cute. A uh, little, little bit too much circling, dumping the puck back in their own zone. Mike Lemoyne in the last period there, he was falling back in his zone and made a bad pass across the middle of the ring. Those are things you don't want to do. And I'm sure they'll may remind Mike it's not a critical error. They did win the game. But those are things they're going to work on. They want to keep the puck moving in a positive fashion. And they, you know, I'm sure consistency is the key as to what uh, Gino wants to work on. But right now, the positives are outweighing the negatives by the tune of 8-0. Eight, oh, eight wins and no losses for the Fighting Sioux. Next week, they hit the road at Michigan Tech. A reminder again, Heart of the City and Spencer for Hire will be seen immediately following the local news. That'll be next here on Channel 8. And right now we're going to show you all the names of the people who worked on this hockey series, and we want to thank our fantastic crew. The final score again, North Dakota 6, Wisconsin 2 for Travis Dunn. Pat Sweeney saying thank you and good night.
This has been Fighting Sioux Hockey with the University of North Dakota Fighting Sioux and the Wisconsin Badgers. Tonight's action has been brought to you by Valley Honda, First National Bank, Grand Forks, Hanson Ford, Offered Motor Service, The Hallmark Corporation, Blue Cross Blue Shield, The Ski Shop, Home of Economy, Fat Albert, The Golden Q, GR Graphics, Community National Bank, the Riverbend Supper Club, Grand Forks Convention and Visitors Bureau, Wilcoxon Mall, Maury, and Shakey's Pizza.